you practice level one um, officer presence? Or yes, and that was any time that we were on the water was <laughs> obviously level okay. one. So I guess my question is, would you practice these various levels? Yes. Okay, how would you practice some of these levels that start to get into physicality or, or higher verbal acuity? In training? Yeah. So in, in training, we would, going into level four or whatever, we would actually have a thing called a red man suit. Um, and we would, Fridays usually, we bring everybody together, then we would have to teach the techniques of, of the proper way to do this, because take a baton and strike somebody in the head, that's obviously deadly force. We do not want that to happen if, God forbid, if that comes to it. So we have to teach, you know, you strike somebody on a meaty portion of the body, how to properly do this stuff, and the best way to do it is to get out there and do it. Um, so we would do red man training, which these guys would, would exercise this on each other. Uh, level four, level five, we would do handcuffs, practicing normal application of handcuffs. Um, and then the entire time, we're also doing level one and two. Um, and if, say, me and you were in a scenario that we built a scenario, it depended on, if you were the boarding officer, how you interacted with me would be how I would interact back with you. So if you came in without another acronym, acronym we used was called LEAPS. Okay, what's LEAPS? Uh, it's called LISTEN. Empathize. Well, how are you spelling? Listen. Yeah. Uh, L -I. No, I know how you spell listen. <laughs> I got that one. Okay. I got, I got that one. The acronym is. Oh, L E A P S. L E A P S. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> What's E? So emp empathize. Okay. Ask questions. Okay. Paraphrase. All right. Yes, summarize. Okay. And you were saying you would use leaps in your training? Yes. You would teach leaps? Yes. All right. And that would go to, you go into a situation and jump on a boat or a scenario like this that you get somebody that's a straw or very upset. Instead of going in, hey, calm down, I'm here to do this. There's other ways to do it. So, hey, what's going on? What's wrong? What, what happened? Well, then say you explain to me what's happened. I, my dog just died. You go to emphasize, yeah, I've had that happen too. It sucks. I'm sorry that this has happened. It then goes into... <laughs> Is it, you're saying empathize. Mm -hmm. You just said emphasize. Did I admit here? Your empathy, is that what you're talking about? Having empathy with somebody? Yes. I wrote down empathize, but you just said emphasize. Maybe it was a slip. Okay, but you're saying you would sh try to share in one's experience. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then ask questions, you know, ask what's going on with it. You know, it pretty much dearming somebody, you know, and, and calming them down, calming them down. Because once again, the whole goal is to de-escalate, keep anything from arriving. All right. So is it that this can lead to de-escalation? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Have you ever had to use officer presence on the job? Yes, every, every day. Okay. Every day that we were doing it. Did you ever use verbal command on the job? Very much so, yes. Did you use control <coughs> techniques on the job? I've had to. Okay. Did you ever have to use one of your aggressive response techniques, using a baton to hit somebody on the meaty portions of their body? Never had. Yeah. Did you ever have to use intermediate? I did not. Or deadly force? No. Did you have any training on hand-to-hand -hand combat? Yes. Did you have any training on how to retain your weapon? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? So we carry, uh, there's on regular boardings, if it wasn't, a, like I said earlier, an HVA or a, or a um, HVA being a high value, value asset, asset, which we would stay on the boat. And then we had automatic weapons for that. It's mounted, crew mounted weapons, what they call it. It didn't pertain, but uh, for weapons retention is what we're talking about. We were trained on the personal defense weapon, which is our pistol. We carried an M16 and we also carried an 870 riot shotgun, which is a small 14 inch barrel uh, shotgun. Okay. 
And did you, what was the type of training that you had about <coughs> weapon retention? Um, what was it? What was it that you were training one another to do? It's it how to obvious, but yeah, it's, it's how to keep how to keep your keep your weapon from going into the hands of somebody that's trying to take it from you. Is uh, this something that you would practice? I was yes, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> what is the concern about not retaining your weapon? That it would one that you would not be able to protect yourself in a daily force situation and also that somebody taking a weapon from you would use it on you or others. Did you ever have any special training with a shotgun? Yes. Did it include how to retain it? Yes. Okay. Did it include how to use it to de-escalate situation? Yes, with, with any weapon, yeah. It was, it was the same as the other weapons. And explain that. Explain how do you use a weapon to de-escalate a situation? So in a situation like a we would consider it in a level one, um, which was officer's presence in certain situations. Like if you come on a boat and you have unaccounted for personnel or they call known safety hazards, uh, which would to have your weapon drawn <coughs> and sometimes a third eye, which was right here, or it was easily, it was readily accessible where you didn't have to take it out of the holster. Um, in their situation, that was still level one because it was officer presence. You see somebody with that weapon as officer presence. And then also, if you had to draw your weapon on someone other than that, was if there was a reasonable possibility that the use of daily force may be, may be authorized, which was another uh, key component on that. All right, show me about that. A reasonable possibility. Yes. That deadly force what may be authorized okay and what does that mean to you it means <clears throat> from the trainer we had that yeah. if you go into a situation that you are not aware of that you don't know if someone's armed or if they have made threats or made threatening gestures and you have a weapon that's obviously holstered or you don't have it either and they come towards you or make these threatening gestures which was closing in the deadly force triangle or the attack triangle, then you are authorized to, to draw that weapon. All right. Which would what is the attack triangle? It's a uh, subject's actions, weapon, and opportunity. Okay. Action, weapon, yes, and opportunity. And how does that work? So, say a scenario where you have threatened me. So you're threatening me. You put that in our subject's actions. Weapon, what we're taught is everybody has a weapon. Hands, fists are a weapon. So in an attack situ attack triangle would be you're threatening me, you are close enough to attack, and then the, which is the opportunity, and then obviously you make the threat or you make the gesture that you're going to attack, throw the fist back. That is at that point an attack. The attack triangle is closed, then I can use level which would be level four or level five in that situation. Okay. And there's also a deadly force triangle, which goes into, which is uh, subjects, actions. Yes, go ahead. Weapon and opportunity. And then under weapons, maximum effective range, and if it's readily accessible. You're talking about range, what do you mean by that? If you, if you have a baseball bat, and you're 50 yards away from me, the weapon is no longer, it doesn't close the triangle because the maximum effective range is no longer there. You, you're not going to harm me with that bat at 50 yards. If you are 50 yards away from me with a, if I could see a gun on you and you're making the threats, the gestures, then the deadly force is, the triangle is closed. Okay. Well, we, I asked you earlier if you have ever been trained to use a firearm to de-escalate a situation. Is that something that you have trained to do? To, to use it to de-escalate, but not to actually shoot somebody with it? Well, yeah, that was it. Under level one, they doing the, um, having it, uh, having it um, out of holster or having the draw down if, if need be, if, if you thought that deadly force may be authorized. When you say draw down, what do you mean? To actually have it pointed at you. Um, 
or at the subject or anybody that is that is causing the threat or that the may be a threat at that time. And when you say draw down and point it at somebody, <clears throat> does that mean that you are in fact going to pull the trigger? <clears throat> the possibility is there, but obviously you're trying to de-escalate the situation. So, um, in your experience, can pointing a gun at somebody de-escalate a situation? Yes. How so? Well, if you pull a gun on someone, we stop. They realize that this is. If it's threat or if you don't know what's going on in a situation and you have you pull a weapon on someone from what I've learned in my training that usually that calls people to back off or to realize what's happening compel compliance Outside of your Coast Guard life and your Coast Guard work, did you own and carry firearms? Yes. Did you ever have to use those firearms before for protection? Yes, I have. All right, can you tell me about that? Uh, one protection time. Relevancy. It's relevant because he is carrying a gun in this case. He is carrying a gun, I believe. Through this testimony will establish why and the fact that he's had experiences with having to do this before informs him and informs the decisions that he makes as a person under these circumstances so the fact that he's been in situations where he's had to use his gun to protect himself before uh, informs his decisions on also february 23rd relevance yeah, I, it's to sustained. what yeah. he did under these circumstances. You're talking, about something, you're talking about something he was doing in the Coast Guard. No, I'm talking about him as a private citizen where he's been out with a firearm, carrying a firearm before, where he's had to use it to protect himself. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could take a step into the jury room, please. following it as part of his Coast Guard training and experience. You're talking about something different? Yeah, I transitioned, Judge. You may not have heard me. I said, all right, now I want to talk about outside of the Coast Guard, not law enforcement Coast Guard, but you just in your regular life outside of Coast Guard. You own a firearm, you carry firearms, and have you ready to use a firearm to protect yourself before outside of the Coast Guard, and you just as a regular citizen? Reported or, I mean, was, mm -hmm. give me a proffer. Oh, he will testify that he's had two circumstances where uh, a person has come up to him, one at an ATM, where he had to go towards his gun and it had the effect that he wanted on the person. They ran away, it deterred them. And the second, he was sitting in his car and, and a gentleman tried to carjack him and he had to retrieve his gun and take it out and it deterred the person and the person ran away. This has now then informed him of how using his gun can de-escalate situations in his private citizen life as well and that it can have that effect that ultimately you know, can de-escalate the situation and protect himself. From the state. Well. Neither of these instances involved the victim in this particular case. The fact that some guy came up to him at the ATM and and he, I'm not clear what he did with his gun, pointed it at this person or did something else, and being carjacked, I'm unaware of any police report where he reported he'd been carjacked. Um, 
at all. So I'm not sure if there's a 911 call here that we don't have access to or some police report that we've not been given regarding this. The state is unaware of both of these instances. Um, and it's not really relevant to the reasonableness analysis that the jurors are going to have to make as far as... So in the past, when I've been a robbed at an ATM or carjacked by someone, I defended myself with my handgun. So it's okay for me to pull a handgun out while I'm trying to force compliance for someone to talk to me? They're totally not equal on any lay level whatsoever. So I'm not sure about the relevance or how it how it comes into play in this case. Well, it sounds like it's something that may be addressed on cross-examination. I'll go ahead and permit it. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry, we can go get, get the panel. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to get back to the evidence. Mr. Schiffer. Yes, thank you, Judge. Uh, I was, we were talking a little bit about now moving away from Coast Guard duty and just being a citizen <coughs> here. Um, do you own firearms? I do. Okay. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to use your personal firearm to protect yourself? I have. Oh, Travis, yeah, put that Thank you. Sorry. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the circumstances of the first time? Yes. So I was living in Pascagoula, Mississippi. I was stationed at, in Mississippi at the time. It was 08 to 2012. I believe it was 2008 when it happened. <clears throat> Pascagoula got destroyed by Katrina. So there's a bunch of vacant lots and everything. One of them was a bank. And the bank was gone, but they had the ATM machine still in the vacant lot at Stacy Gas Station. Coming through to get cash for, I think it was for the launch for the uh, station. I pull in, I see two younger males next to the side. Thought it was a little weird that they're paying attention to me and been paying attention to people going in and out near there. So I stepped out of the truck and went to the ATM. As soon as I went to the ATM. Let me stop you. Let me stop you. Did you have a gun on you at the time? I, I did. What uh, kind of gun was it? It was a 1911 uh, U.S. Army service pistol. Do you, did you have a permit or a license to carry? Yes, I, I had a concealed carry permit and it was a concealed weapon. Uh, okay. Through the house, so. All right, so you're at the ATM. What happened? Yep, and uh, as soon as I put my card in, the, the two males approached on either side. Uh, one of them told me to give me his money. All I did was pull up my shirt and showed that I had a weapon, and they turned and jumped the fence. It was gone. Okay. I pulled the money out and went to work. Okay. Did you call the police or report it? I didn't call the police on that. Okay. It was, that was it. All right. Um, what is the <clears throat> second time that you had to use your gun? I say use your gun. That time you didn't really have to use it. just showed it. No, I just okay. showed it. The second one was in Pascagoula as well. It was in 2012, 2011. And... Uh, I was going into work. We had a high value asset coming in. So I was coming in at 8 o'clock and uh, 
road I was coming in on was on, it was destroyed by Katrina, it was real dark, everything was, it was the industrial side of town. And was stopped at a red light, had the windows down in the truck, and sitting at the red light, listening to the music on the radio, somebody came to the passenger door and popped the lock and was opening the door on me. Let me stop you. Popping the lock meaning was the window down? The window was down, he just popped it, it was a okay. GMC, so it was right there, he popped it open. All right. And opened the door and uh, started yelling, I was getting in the truck, so. What, you said he started yelling? Yes, so. I don't know what he was saying, but it was, he was, he was yelling. Okay. And uh, so I had the pistol between my, I had a holster between my seats, and I pulled the pistol out and, and pointed at him, told him to get out of my truck. He got out and ran off. Uh, got to the station and we had three reservists that were actually with the police department there. Told about it and I believe we had a report made on it. Okay, all right. All right, I want to focus your attention back to Satilla Shores. Okay. <coughs> Was there ever a time that <coughs> you yourself um, tried to figure out if any particular person was involved in some of the crime that had been happening over that summer in 2019? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about that circumstance? Yeah, so around, I believe it was July, 1st of July, my neighbor at the time, Kim Ballesteros, she had her purse stolen, or told us that her purse stolen out of her vehicle. And uh, so we were, we neighbors talked about it, you know, this is Something else has happened. Uh, a few days later, a week or so later, uh, I was coming back from a fishing trip. I have a boat doing charters on the side, and I was actually coming back to my house with some clients on Fancy Bluff Creek. Do you have a? I do have a map here. Yes, yeah, so I have this up already. Fancy Bluff Creek. Yep, up under the bridge, uh, yeah. the Highway 17 bridge. Yep, we got under there. I'm just going to pull this back too. The state has a similar exhibit that they've used. This being the um, Google Earth image. Okay. So, that? yes, I was coming from the north and coming back down towards till it, uh, Fancy Bluff to. You were where? Where your finger is? On the water. On the water. In, okay. in my boat, yes. Okay. And uh, got under the bridge and saw a bunch of trash, tarps, and, and uh, there was an old tackle box down there and. and um, just a bunch of trash under the bridge. So this looks like a homeless camp. And it's very close to the neighborhood. There's a trail that goes to it, actually. Drove on by, I started thinking that we just had, neighbor just had a uh, purse stolen. So let me check this out. This might be this homeless person, or if there is homeless people in there, these might be the ones going into the neighborhood. So we got home, uh, finished with the client. So let me stop you there. Mm -hmm. When you say you got home, we don't see it on this map here, but does, this connect coming up around over onto this side? It does, yes. Fancy Bluff Creek joins Little Satilla south of the neighborhood. Okay. So you boated around back to your dock? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. So got back, uh, finished with the clients, and told my father that, I, yeah, hey, there's a, looks like there's a homeless camp under the bridge. You know, this, this purse is just stolen. I want to go see if there's anybody down there. So I'll join you. So we get in my truck. Um, I was I carry a weapon everywhere. I got a concealed weapon, so I, I was on. I'm not sure if my dad was or not. Uh, there was a trail. First, we tried on the other on the neighborhood side of the road. All right. So uh, that being this side over here. It probably if you look at the. Uh, was, was there any satellite? access point to drive over here? There is a power line that parallels the highway between the neighborhood and the highway. It's an overgrown road, or it's an overgrown field. Okay. We couldn't get to it um, from there. Uh, There's rocks and stuff, is just too bad. So I drove across Highway 17 onto uh, Fancy Bluff Road. Okay. And then there's a little four-wheeler trail. So Satilla Drive comes across 17? It does. Is that Fancy Bluff up here? I believe it is. Okay. I believe it is. All right. And then there's a wooded lot. Um, right directly across and there's a four-wheeler trail that parallels the highway there okay what did you do so <clears throat> me and dad walked down the four-wheeler trail he's behind me and uh, it goes down kind of meanders around a couple of trees and it gets to the creek makes a right and it goes under the bridge so I turn go down the bridge 
I don't see anybody and then get under the northbound lane and see someone fishing right at the bank and uh, he had a machete I guess a real long knife it was one of fillet knife it was like a machete right next to him he doesn't see me I walk on but get between him and the knife and then right, let me stop you there mm -hmm. as you're doing this you're going down there with your sidearm or how is it that you feel comfortable going down there to inspect the situation I didn't see any threat there was no threat yeah I was uh I didn't see first I didn't see anybody down there and if I did then I would talk to them you know just just right. talk to them. so what happened so I get to him uh, I get between him and his knife why did you do that for safety okay just for safety and they talked to him uh, I said how you doing and his friendly guy and uh, I asked him if he's living down the bridge he told us that he wasn't he told us that he was living on a road off of Fancy Bluff Road in the neighborhood I don't remember what the road was and I told him I said you know, straight up there's a bunch of stuff being stolen in this neighborhood I'm seeing if there's anything down here. He said, no, I haven't seen anything. Okay. We looked around. I think my dad looked at some of the tarps. He said it wasn't his stuff. Um, I'm certain that he was living under that bridge. We didn't see anything. We when left. you said you didn't see anything, what were you looking for? I was just looking for if there was any purses or if there was any equipment, anything that obviously wouldn't, you know, if you see uh, boat motors or tackle boxes or, you know, anything versus anything that's just okay it would be odd I mean I wouldn't pick it up and take it what we did as soon as we left uh, my dad called the non-emergency number and informed the police they're aware obviously of what's been going on in the neighborhood and told okay. them hey there's a homeless person on this bridge check it out for us all right I'm gonna stop you there <clears throat> and just to be sure we're on the same page Hey, this is a friend of my home. I'm the chief of the VA's office. Is there a uh, supervisor available? I might be able to speak to Sure, just a moment. And are you talking uh, the dispatch supervisor or police supervisor? Police supervisor, yeah. Anybody on duty would be fine. I gotta, okay. I, gotta, I wanted to make, make more. Okay. And all right, and what was your name? Greg McMichael. Okay, and a contact number for you? 912-217-1726. They can call me back. If, if okay, and, you know, and your address, sir? Uh, 230 Chapilla Drive. We've had a lot of break-ins in this area out here, all automobile break-ins. And uh, my son and I just discovered a guy. We think he may be living on the, uh, the uh, Bluff Creek Bridge on 17. Is this, this is the call. Yes. Okay. Did you discuss this finding of sorts, this person that you thought living on the bridge, did you discuss it with anybody else in the neighborhood? I did. Who did you discuss with, if you can remember? Uh, no, Randy Parr, my direct neighbor. Um, I'm sure I've spoken to Matt Albenzi when he'd stopped by, and then uh, there's another guy down the road, older fella. Um, I cannot remember his name. Okay, but. all right. Do you know whether or not the subject of someone living under the Fancy Bluff Bridge, being a suspect of things happening in the neighborhood, whether that subject came up any more over the course of the next five or six months yeah there was people it was always there you know it was always in the back of people's mind or something happened it's you would hear you would see it on the facebook neighborhood page of you know, the homeless person I, there's been, there's been a homeless person around you know it's it's uh uh that was from from that moment forward people knew that that there was a homeless person under that bridge so. okay all right now i want to ask you about 220 satilla drive Okay. All right. Did did you ever hear anything about thefts or things being stolen from 220? I did. When did you hear that? The first was from my mother. Okay. And then she 
heard it from someone or saw it on Facebook and it was told it to me. And then I started seeing it on the Facebook page. Okay. Did you speak to anybody other than your mother? Uh, at first, no. Okay. Did you ever talk to Diego Perez about it? No, uh, no not until February 11th. Really. Okay, all right. Or but in terms questions. of what was it that you understood was stolen from 220? From my mother, and you know, I heard that there was equipment stolen off a boat. Located in, where? In, in, the, in the house, in 220 still drive. Okay. Do you know if you ever spoke to Matt Albenzi about it? Um, we've talked about it, but we just talked about it. Like I said, it wasn't, you know, um, um, in great detail. You just say, hey, you know, there, there's been stuff stolen out of that house, out of that boat. So, yeah, you know. Did you know of the man who lived or who was building 220 Satilla? I met him once, but I didn't know. From Did you know anything about him, about whether he was living on the property or... or um, I knew that he stayed on the property on weekends and stuff like that. Um, when I first met him, he was he has a he had a camper in the backyard, and under from my understanding was he was working on the house himself, and he'd spend weekends or sometimes a week there, and uh, he would uh, he would stay at that house or at that camper. Um, he wasn't staying living in the in the house that he was building at the time. He was living right behind it, or staying right behind it when he was on property. Okay, so just sort of generally speaking you had learned that boat equipment was stolen and that the that the owner was living on a camper on the property on weekends yes okay all right did you ever investigate anything about 220 satella in 2019 no okay go in there search the residents, do any kind of follow-up on stolen goods or anything like that? No. Okay. Did you ever speak to Larry English in 2019 about his stolen property? I did not. Okay. Or ask him if you could help him catch whoever had stolen his property? No. Okay. In 2020, were you the victim of crime? I was. All right. When was that? A January 1st. Okay. What happened? I had a pistol stolen out of my truck. What kind of gun was it? It was a uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 9C. Okay. Uh, smaller, smaller. Uh, All right. Silver. And that was when? Uh, January 1st, New Year's. Okay. Do you know the circumstances of how it was stolen? Yes. I was, uh, my dad moved the vehicle for me, that, or moved the vehicle that morning between 9 and 9 to 11, 9 30, 11 30, somewhere around there. He moved it close to the side of the road to um, to the adjacent property right on the on the road. I came out about 11:45 to go somewhere. Opened the truck. The door was unlocked. I don't know if he left the vehicle unlocked or if I left it unlocked that evening and saw that my holster was sitting in the seat. Went back in and asked my dad if he moved my gun. Uh, being that he moved, was in that driver's seat where the holster was. He said he did not. So I looked around the house, made sure that I didn't misplace the pistol for some unknown reason, and came to the conclusion that my pistol was stolen and called and made a report on it. Okay, you, you said you called. Who'd you call? I called the uh, Glenn County Police Department, not emergency. Okay. It may have been, I, the, I called the police department. Right, I'm going to play State's Exhibit 161. <coughs> Brothers Communications, operator 915. Hey, yes, I need a, uh, I need a police officer. I, I got a report of a, uh, made a report of stolen stuff. You, you what, sir? I need a police officer. I need to report a stolen pistol. Okay, and what's the address it was stolen from? 230 Satilla Drive. That's 230 Satilla Drive, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that the call? Yes. Okay. No other pistol stolen from you. That's the only one. That's the only one. Okay. Were you concerned at all about the theft of your gun? Yes. Okay. Why? Well, one, I don't know who has the weapon. Um, having it stolen out of my truck, 
I don't know who's got it. I don't know if they know anything, what they're doing with the gun. They might harm themselves or use it to harm someone else or use it for a crime or, or uh, you know, who knows. Did you hear of other reports of guns being stolen in the neighborhood? Yes. Do you know what it, essentially what it was that you were hearing? Oh, there was, I've heard of several vehicles being broken into and pistol or guns stolen out of those vehicles. Don't know the addresses, but it was it was common it was common talk around the neighborhood. Okay. At this time, we're moving into January of 2020. Now, no longer the fall of 2019. We haven't really discussed whether or not the crime in the neighborhood was continuing or on the rise. Can you give us a little bit of your understanding of what the level of crime was around this time? <coughs> and across October, November, December. Yeah, so it was steady, I guess would be the best way to explain it. It was steady. Um, the house on 220 around October was when it was apparent when you were hearing that uh, Mr. English had stuff stolen out of his, out of his boat out of there, okay. expensive stuff. And uh, they were, he put a surveillance system up and they were catching people going into the house. How did you learn about the surveillance system? Uh, once again, from my parents oh, and so here in front of on Facebook. Okay, parents and Facebook. Yep. Right. And and okay. neighbors. Uh, uh, Mr. Albenzi told me, you know, he said that they had somebody in there. You saw them on the camera, but that's okay. as far as I went. At this point, at this point in January of 2020, we've got crime in the neighborhood okay we've got suspicion in the neighborhood at this point had that at all begun to narrow into a particular person it was starting to yes um having this point the 220s constantly being broken into and then they have videos of people now starting to think all right there may be someone that maybe some body or a pair of people that are constant that's that is the one that's continuing to come into this neighborhood. All right. Instead so, of random uh, acts of burglary. Okay. Did you have any experience yourself with 220 Satella? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us when that was? It was on February 11th, okay. uh, around 7.30 in the evening. All right, tell us what you were doing on February 11th, around 7.30 in the evening. All right, just got, just finished eating dinner. Uh, decided to go fill up my work car. Which is? That was a, a little Volkswagen <coughs> Jetta, uh, 04, 05, somewhere around there. Instead of having to get up at four o'clock in the morning to fill it up, I just fill it up in the evening, come back and be done with it. Uh, left the house, turned on Satilla Drive and started heading out of the neighborhood. All right, stop there. Do you see where your house is approximately on this map? Is this in y'all's way? It's not. It might be for one of them. Let me move this forward. Just attach. Can you lean forward and see it? Yeah. Your house is. So, yes. That's one of it. these. That's it. Here. Yep. Okay. All right. You were here. Yep. Where did you go? I came out, turned on Satilla, take a left. Okay. Yep. And then made it to about where the S is on Satilla Drive. Okay. Right there. All right. What did you said you made it to about there and then what? So <clears throat> as I'm going as I'm driving down the neighborhood, I see someone run across the street. All uh, right. From what side to what side? Came from the <coughs> so here you are down here. You're saying you're coming up Satilla, yeah, you make right it there. to about the S, mm -hmm. and what do you see? I see someone run from the, the right side to the left side. This side? It. Yep. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll tell you where. Yep, go ahead. Go up to the next house, between yep. those two houses right mm -hmm. there. Right here. Yep, and ran okay. across, directly across the street. Okay. And then into the yard that was there. How far back into the yard? I didn't see them until I went further up, so they went out of sight. Okay, you once come got, further up. Once I got to Jones, the house, yep, Center Jones. Okay. 
the house one up from 220. Okay, right here. There. Yes. This house here. This uh, is is this 220 here? I believe so. Yes. Okay. All right. Go yes. ahead. So that house there that you put the X on. Yes. At the furthest corner away, which here. was where the driveway was, I saw that individual that ran across the road was at the was right there at their bushes running across their driveway. When you say bushes, do you mean bushes down here by the road? No, 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 uh, close to the house. Okay, bushes <laughs> so close to the house. It's a Spanish style house, so they have like a terrace or a open veranda in the front. In the front, a courtyard? Front. Yeah, yeah, courtyard. So, and where did you see this person go when they crossed the street? I lost sight of him until I saw him right at the driveway of that house. Okay. So, yeah, that was. The, Obviously, that was the path that he'd taken. And how far back off the road was this person, would you estimate? He was close to the house, so probably 20, 20, 30 feet. All right, so this distance being 20 to 30 feet off the road. Yes. Okay. All right. Did you see anything else? Yeah, so I don't have my lights on him. I don't have my lights on him at the time. Yeah. But as a... Uh, as I'm coming out, I've come to a stop at this point, and he is staying in the shadows, obviously trying to avoid being detected. Or okay. Uh, detected. He's, well, lack of better terms, lurking. He's creeping. Um, wasn't in a run. It was just, just creeping through the shadows. You know, if there's a shadow running through here, he'd run with it and then go to it, and he was staying close to the house. Okay. I uh, honestly said, what's going on here? So I stopped, I was right at Jones Till and I backed my vehicle up to him, turning onto that house. You said you backed your vehicle up to him, what do you mean? Or, I'm sorry, I was back, I was putting the back side of my vehicle up Jones, and as I was doing, I was swinging my lights. Okay. Uh, on him when he was in front of that house at that time. Is this kind of accurately depicting what we're talking about? Yes. This being your car? That's correct. Okay. And then I'm swinging it as he's, coming to 220. He's moving this way? Yep. Okay. So there was a tree between 220 and that house, and it was real It was real close to the corner of that house. Uh, he went between that, stayed in the shadows there, and then I stopped, and it was obvious that he was aware that I have called him, have Good. put the lights on him. Okay. So he comes out of the shadows, gets into a wall, just kind of stands up, and then run like a jog almost, into the shadow that the portal it was making. Where is the porta potty? Portal up was on the corner of 220. Okay. Uh, between or at that corner of that house. We've seen some pictures of it in That's evidence. Where it is that the same portal up? That same portal. Okay. Or same spot. All right. Okay. Go ahead. So what happens when he goes towards the portal? So he's 20 or 30 feet behind the portal it, coming from that house. Uh, and this again, obviously, he's aware that I am aware that he's there. Had lights on him. I get out of the vehicle, put as a standard car, so I put it in uh, parking brake on. Step out of the vehicle and was going to ask him what he's Sorry. doing. Sorry, what do you mean by standard car? Is a stick shift. Okay, stick go ahead. Shift. I get out of the vehicle. He's trotting to me. All right, stop. Why are you getting out of the vehicle? To see what he's doing. To ask him what he's doing. Maybe run him off. Okay. Um, I've never. I haven't seen seen him before. Okay. At all. Did he Did he wave at you? No, he did. Did he try to talk to you? No, he didn't. I, like that's I why lost I was my thinking. dog or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened? You step out. I step out to ask him, you know, to see what's going on, to, to get an idea what's happening. As he comes out of the shadows from behind that portal, it he comes directly to me. I'm out of the door, and he comes out and he pulls up his shirt and goes to reach in his pocket or waistband area, going for his pocket. Um, I thought it was pocket at first, but it was later on. It didn't make sense because if you're going to reach your pocket, you would go for the, the pocket that's on whichever side you're on. Okay. It reaches like this. So what happened at that I, moment? It, it freaked me out. So once I realized what's going on, that he is doing this, and I'm under assumption that he's armed, I jump back in the vehicle, and he turns around and runs into the house. Okay. Uh, into the vacant, into the, the 220, the, the, the house at 220. All right. So from the porta potty? Mm -hmm. Coming forward, then when you then he goes into the house. Yeah, he stopped. And once I 
jumping back into my vehicle, he just turns and, and goes into the house. All right. Runs. It's not a, it wasn't like a, a full sprint. It was, he's gone, let me continue what I'm doing. Okay. Kind what, of. What did you do at that moment? Uh, well, it startled me. It, it, it freaked me out. So I, I don't know if I had my phone in the vehicle or not. It wasn't there. I didn't have a gun on me. He's gone. I'm just getting the hell out of there. I just wanted to leave, make sure, because I don't know where he's at at this point. I go to jump in the, the car to take off to the house. I forget the, the parking brakes on. I stall the truck, the vehicle out, crank the car back up, and get to turn and go back to my home. Okay. To, what did you do once you got to your home? So once I got home, I believe my dad was in the garage. Or the garage door was open. Okay. Or may have been in the kitchen. Uh, I told him what just happened, and I had two phones, had my regular phone and my work phone, and best I could remember what I was doing was going to grab a phone. Well, I told Dad, I said, hey, there's somebody, I just caught somebody lurking at the, at the neighborhood, neighbor house and just went into 220. So he comes out and I'm assuming his arm and goes down the road. Okay, hold on, let me stop you there. When Did, did you call the police? I did. All right. Yeah. Where are you when your dad starts to walk down the street? I was at my vehicle. I was at the driveway. Okay. Did you say anything to your dad? Yeah, I told him to wait. I said, Why? hold on a second, hold on a second. I don't know what's happening. I, I'm assuming this guy's armed. Um, and dad, he just had he had a stroke a couple <clears throat> months earlier, two, three months earlier, and, and uh, which everything's fine, but you're concerned about him. If somebody... You know, Does he have any other health issues? Yeah, he's got a busted hip, or uh, he actually had a total hip replacement, and, and uh, he's had a couple heart attacks. And, uh, okay. So you say, Dad, wait. Yeah, wait. And he's walking on down the road. He, he's going on down the road. All right, what do you do? So I go in, <coughs> grab the keys to my truck, and grab one of my guns, which was at the safe, which was in the garage right there. Get out get down to the road where dad is, I'm calling 911 at the time. By the time the operator picks up, I pull up to 220. And at that time, my father and I wasn't aware who it was at the time, the neighbor, another neighbor dad was interacting with, I didn't know who it was, but it ended up being Diego Perez. All right, I'm gonna pause you there. Okay. And let me pull up. Exhibit 163. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, Satilla Drive, 230. Satilla Drive. What's going on? We got a, uh, we've had a string of burglaries. Um, I was leaving the neighborhood and I just caught a guy running into a um, house being built. Two houses down from me. Do you hear the way you sound? Yes. What are we hearing? Uh, I was still, I was still scared. I was breathing heavy. Um, I was still alarmed. I guess would be the best way to explain. Okay. Um, when I turned around, he took off running into the house. Okay. What did he look like? Uh, it's a black male, red shirt, white. Shorts. And you said the house is being built? It's being built, yes ma'am. It's vacant right now. He is in the house. Why did you tell the 911 operator that you had a string of burglaries happening in the neighborhood? Well, that was apparent. Um, and then, I guess going into it, that that him going into that house, and then knowing that that house has been the one that's been breaking in and everything's been stolen, or you know, stuff's been stolen in there, that this is there's a connection to this, and I think that's why. What did you think he might be doing in the house that night? I think he was going back and stealing, breaking, breaking in, burning up. Travis McMichael, 
423-1374. All right. Where are you now? And is that that's you breathing? That was me breathing, yes. Right across the street in my truck, watching the house. Watching the house with it right now, right here at the okay. All right, so you say you're sitting in your truck and you're watching the house. What does that mean? Uh, so, my, like I said, my dad was on down there by the time I got my, my phone and called 911. It was just a second to get there. Um, you heard me whistle right there. That was, I saw the police coming and I was trying to get attention to my father and it turned out to be Diego to say, hey, the police are right here. You know, I don't want anything to happen. Then think that they're the ones breaking in. All right, stop. Did you go in the house? I did not. Why not? Because I didn't know, I lost sight of, of the individual that just went in there and he acted like he may have been armed. I'm not going to, I'm not going to follow him in there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to chase or, or investigate somebody that may be armed. And I don't have any reason to go into that house. Well, to, what about your dad and this other fellow that's out there? I don't know why they, they, they were armed, but I don't know why that they decided to do that. Were you concerned? I was. About what? About them going in there and, and running across someone that intends to do harm or would, would try to harm them. All right, so you're outside the house, sitting there on the phone, lights on the house. Yes. Okay. What kind of truck are you in? Red Ford F-150. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, one night it just startled me. Um, when I turned around, when I turned around and saw him and backed up, he reached into his pocket and ran into the house. So I don't know if he's armed or not, um, but he looked like he was acting like he was. So, uh, you know, be mindful of that. Okay. Which pocket did he reach into? Uh, left, I believe. All right. So be mindful of that. Again, it may be obvious, but what is it that you're trying to communicate? That the person that I just had this interaction with possibility is armed and is obviously willing to use it if, if that was the case. Well, why are you telling the 911 call center operator to be mindful of that? So the police that show up on scene would come in knowing what they're, that they're possibly walking into. Okay. And now, so 230 is the vacant lot address? It's, no, it's my address. I do it's your address? It's probably okay. 8 or 226. Might be 226? Possibly. How many houses down is it from yours? It's two towards the highway. He's got, I guess he doesn't realize we're here. He's got the damn lights on right now. He's got a flashlight going through the house. Does he? Okay. So you're now surmising that the person that you saw going in the house has a flashlight now. Yes. All right. Did you come to understand that that was not what you thought? It wasn't. No. It was. Uh, <coughs> it was our neighbor Diego. Okay. It was. All right. Did they ever see or talk to or catch the person that had entered the house that night? No, they did not. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. On that night, did you meet with the police ultimately? Yes, I was. I stayed where we were, and then when they arrived on scene, I stayed with. There. All right. Do you remember the name of the officer you met with? Uh, one was Officer Rash. Okay. 
And who else was out there? I think you said your dad. Yes, my dad was out there. Uh, the you neighbor Diego, Diego was out there. Diego. All right. Did anybody else show up that night? Uh, that I spoke to, you see in the video, obviously, Ronnie Olson came out there. Uh, I don't think I spoke to him, but then I spoke to Matt Albenzi. All right. But were you aware that Ronnie was there? Yes. Okay. And you said Matt Albenzi. Anybody else that you were aware was there? And I mean that night, not after watching the, the video, the body cam video. I spoke to uh, another neighbor, Brandon Gregory, right. right after it happened when I was leaving. All right. And who is Brandon Gregory? He's a neighbor. I think he lives on Zellwood. He's also a, uh, at the time, I'm not sure if he is or not anymore, but a police officer. Works with Clinton County Police Office. With what? Clinton County Police Department. Oh, okay. And, uh, he just was coming home. He wasn't involved with it. Okay. All right. You said that you talked to Officer Rash? Yes. All right. Did Officer Rash show you anything? Yes, after everything was done, he showed me the video of the of what occurred just what what I uh, what I witnessed and, and called uh, now one on the video of what of the individual going into the house so from running from the portal left into the house yes he's now showing you the video of this person inside the inside the house, house yeah okay <laughs> and did you watch the video I did was there anything about the video that made you feel anything whatsoever yeah so having that experience where I just said that you know with him drawing the or acting like he's drawing the weapon and then running into the house and then seeing the video that he's walking walking around so nonchalant in that that house kind of it startled me a little bit that having that just happen just catching him creeping through that front yard and obviously trying to uh, avoid detection and then doing what he did there and then going into the house and then walking around in there like it's no big deal was was alarming. Alarming why? Because I wouldn't think anyone acting normal would do that and somebody that's that's willing to act like they're they have a gun or, or act like that they will harm you to prevent you from asking them or doing anything there and then go in and just acting all normal and nonchalant is and never catching the guy knowing what he's doing is just it just sets off the alarms for me okay it's just bold it's just very you said bold yeah it's just the way that he's acting is just very it's a bold move did you learn about you had mentioned already that you were aware of some boat equipment being stolen back in october or from the house did you learn or did you see any of the other videos of 220 that night i think i, I saw some stills i believe some stills of what uh it was the first time i saw it was one of i believe it was mr Arbery on the dock okay <clears throat> all right all right, any other ones? I can't recall which ones were others. I think they did show another one of him walking around in the evening time. Okay. Um, but I was in, I was told for the first time that, that that it was the same guy that has been in that house several times. Okay. Again, the question I asked you about January 1st, now moving to February 11th. In your mind, the idea of crime happening in the neighborhood, things being stolen, had you at all funneled that even further into trying to determine who may be responsible for some of the crime in the neighborhood? At that point, yes, it did. Or who was responsible for stealing the boat equipment from 220? Yes. All right. Did you draw any conclusions about who that might be? I did. All right. who, who did you think it was? I was thinking it was the, the person I just had an encounter with that evening on February 11th. Okay. And what is it that you think 
he was doing in 220. I thought that he was breaking back in and, and was going to steal some more stuff. After that night, did you talk with anybody else in the neighborhood just about crime? A couple of days later, um, I'm sure that I know that me and Matt Albenzi talked about that evening. If you know, if you heard anything, anything like that, and uh, I've spoke to Diego Perez also, uh, same kind of conversation. Just if, uh, if he heard any more about it, anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I want to move into February 23rd. We, yeah. Short Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take a 15 minute recess. Um, and we'll bring you back for a continuation of the evidence. So, rest for a jury, please. Take uh, 15 minutes. Uh, you can go ahead and step down. Yes, sir.
Yeah. All right. Uh, we got the defendants present, represented by counsel. Um, kept an eye on juror number 12 during the examination. I'm going to uh, move her uh, closer to the bailiff so that she, if she is uh, uh, struggling at all, she can stand up and do whatever she needs to do to ensure that she is uh, not struggling. I made eye contact with an eye contact with her a number of times and, and did note that she was struggling. I will note though she didn't fall asleep. But that was not the issue, but it did look like she was um, uh, having problems. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, by moving her this afternoon, we'll remedy that, and uh, it will not be an issue for the parties or for the court. Thank you. 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 You gonna give her a flask, Mr. Sheffield? Sorry, <laughs> you, you give yeah. her a flask. Slowly adding up. Yeah. The number of fingers that will be in the glass this evening. <laughs> oh, I, sorry, not flat carafe. I should have said. Uh, yeah. This is the best coffee cup because it drinks on all sides. It's called Chantal. Uh, you just made a friend somewhere. Oh, the plug. A plug. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, somebody's earning royalties. <laughs> I wish it was us. It's not, it's not. not sponsored. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are ready to proceed, I believe, once we have a little meeting over here. got three we're good we're good yep I got numbers we're all set all right Mr. Sheffield there's been a little all right we're back we're back okay great thank you Mel. okay Travis I want to move to February 23rd okay. let's start with where you were dad came in the house okay yeah. where were you um, at that time at that moment I was in the living room uh, I was trying to get my son to take a nap okay. uh, who were you with I had my son on my chest obviously and uh, my mother was in there and I think my sister was in there as well okay did your dad come in he did all right what did you notice about your dad when he came in uh, he came through the kitchen the back kitchen door that leads to the garage and uh, he was in a almost frantic state uh, he came in like I said earlier he's had hip surgery he's had a stroke so him going at a fast pace is kind of a rare thing and he was moving pretty quick okay. uh, coming in did he say anything to you yeah he said uh, he said Travis the guy that has been breaking in down the road just ran by the house 
something's happened. The guy. The guy. Did you know who he meant by the guy? I was under assumption that it was the same individual that I saw on the 11th. Okay. Because he was down there as well. I saw the same video. Because who was down there as well? My, my father was down there as well on the 11th and saw the same video and talked to Mr. Ra or uh, Officer Rash <clears throat> with me as well. So I was under the assumption that it was the same guy from the 11th is who he's speaking of that just ran by. All right, so he comes in. The guy who's been breaking in down the street is <clears throat> back. Yes. Okay, then what? Yes. So he ran off. I think he told me to grab my gun. Okay. He's, you know, he said, something's happening. Grab your gun. Uh, so I went to my room, which is... The door is to the living um, to the living room that I was in, and the first firearm that I had that was easily accessible because I had my son that week, uh, my pistols were in the safe and everything was, was my shotgun. I just cleaned it or I had it out for something, so I grabbed the shotgun. Okay. And walked out. Uh, went out through the kitchen door to the um, to the driveway where my truck was. Okay. So I'm about to get a permit on that. So you come out of your house. You can, you can come from this line. You come out of your house, and you come out where? I came out and went to the driveway, uh, to the end of the driveway, because my truck was was at the um, at the very end. I think okay. the boat was in the driveway. So I had right All right. So you come out. Yep. What what, what do you do first? Uh, so I went to the driver's side. Or when I came out, I, <clears throat> Dad went into his into his. Uh, bedroom so I was by myself when I came out I came out to see what was going on um, I looked obviously out of the driveway or out of the um, garage didn't see anything and then went to the end of the road to where my truck was okay What'd Look, you I looked down to the right down back in which direction into the neighborhood towards Burford and Holmes okay so you look this way yes all right and then I look <clears throat> back down Satilla, where okay. 220, where the house that has been uh, having stuff stolen, and All right. I saw the guy run into, was down there. I looked down there and I saw my neighbor, Matt Albenzi, okay. in the road. All right, where was Matt? Matt was on Satilla Drive. Um, I thought he was at right at the adjacent to the property there. Uh, what property? To the 220. Okay. So Matt Albenzi was up this way. Okay, yeah. and what did you see or say or do? So I came out when I saw Matt, I was right at the truck. So when I saw Matt down the road, he saw me and he pointed down the road, pointed down towards Burford and Satilla and Holmes towards me. Did you see him point? I did. Where were you standing when you saw him? I was right at my, at, at the corner of the driveway and <clears throat> Satilla Drive. We have uh we have a group of mailboxes right there, and I was just on the inside of those mailboxes. Okay, and he pointed in what direction? Towards me, down Satilla Drive. Okay, pointing this way towards Burford? Yes, sir. Okay. What did you think when you saw that? At that moment, <clears throat> having Dad saying, the guy that just ran by the house, the guy that you, that been breaking into, into the house down the road, just ran by the house, I came out, didn't see him, and then saw... Matt Albenzi, who was on scene on February 11th, who also saw the video and has been seen, has seen videos as we've talked about, sure. pointing down the road, I thought it was reasonable that, okay, there's something to this. This guy may have just ran by. Matt may have just seen him, either caught him breaking in, stealing something, or uh, the guy that owns the property that stays in the, in the camper might be on property and just startled him or god forbid maybe there may have been an altercation or something happened okay they have seen they have broken in okay <clears throat> so what did you do so at that time my dad came out came out of the house through the garage as well and uh he told me he ran down the road he pointed towards burford told you who ran down my the father road. told me the guy from from uh the other night, which turned out to be Mr. Arbery, but he said the guy they just ran down um, Satilla. Go ahead. So, 
We want to get in the truck. Let's go down there. Okay. So okay. Your dad is communicating to you. He says, "Get in the truck." Yes. Okay. You said you had a shotgun. I did. Where did you put your shotgun? Um, I put it right between. There's a brand new truck, so uh, it had vinyl seats. It's a forty six. It's a bench bench seat. It's a work truck. And what I would usually do if I'm out in the woods or if I have a long gun with me is I'd put it between the seats. It was a, a crease between the, the okay. two seats split. It's, so it's, it's the bench seat. It is. But there's a crease. Yeah, so there's three different seats, but they're all across. And I just put my my shotgun or rifle or whatever okay. right there. All right. And, and where's and the muzzle? The muzzle is down to the floorboard, touching the floorboard by the gas pedal. All right, and where's the butt of the gun? The butt of the gun. Being that was a, a short shot, a shorter shotgun. If y'all can see where I'm at here, if I'm sitting in the seat, the butt would be about right here. Okay. Uh, the, where right did there. your dad get in the car? So dad, I had a car seat in the truck at the time. It was a regular cab pickup. And all right, stop there. Okay. I've shown the statement I've marked as Travis Michael Exhibit 14 for identification. Approach? Yes. I'm going to show you. Travis McMichael, 14 for identification. Do you recognize it? Yes. What is it? That is uh, looking in the interior of my of my truck at the time with my son's car seat in the passenger seat. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of the car seat in your truck? Very, very much so, yes. Move to admit Defense Exhibit 14. No objection. Do you publish? Go ahead. So I'm showing you Defense 14. We're taking a look here. Obviously, this is the car seat we're talking about? Yeah, same car seat. Okay. All right. So where is your dad? He sitting? is He is st stuffed in the car seat. Uh, he's kind of he's kind of got half of him in the car seat and he's this is the car seat. He's kind of angled in it like this. He's stuffed. The best term to say he's stuffed. Okay. In that car seat. The and, and what is he saying to you, if anything? Um, <clears throat> I think he was cussing about the car seat, you know, trying to get in the car seat. And I, I just started driving. At that point, Which I don't think you driving. I, I turn out and head towards Burford. Okay. And what are you doing driving in that direction? Uh, I'm trying to find out what's going on. I'm trying to analyze the whole situation, but looking for whoever it was that ran by. I haven't made any eye contact at a time. But, uh, have you personally determined who it was that ran by? No, I did not. Have you accepted what your dad has said that this is in fact the guy? I uh, assume that he was correct, but I wanted to verify. Okay, so you said you start heading towards Burford. Yes. All right, now we're towards Burford. What do you do or what do you see? Sometime between before Burford, or as we're going, I asked my father, I said, uh, have you, or said, did you call the cops or the cops on the way? I'm not sure exactly what I said. I think I said, did you call the cops? Okay. Um, and so at this moment, you're asking him if he called the police? Yes. All right. And? He said, I, I know that he didn't, I, he didn't catch what I was saying. I don't think he was paying attention completely. He said, yes, yes. I assume that he has called the police. Okay. You're saying, I know that he didn't. You mean as you sit here today, you know he didn't? As minutes later, I, I, I realized that he okay. did Okay. At this moment, what was your impression at this moment? That the police have been called. Okay. Where do you go now? I continue uh, about that time, right around there, we were at the corner of Satilla Homes, and then Burford's a couple yards past that. We were about right there. There is a group of bushes and kind of a jog onto Burford. Okay. So you can't see, you can see straight down the road, but where we were at, you can't really, you know, you can miss something. All right. So there's bushes here at the corner of Burford? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you do? Continue on Burford. I look down Satilla, I look down Holmes. There's nobody. Um, All right. On either side. You're looking. Okay. And then you go this way. Yep. Now what? Turn on, as soon as we get on Burford, I see, uh, turn up, be Mr. Arbery uh, running down the road. Okay. So what, 
are you doing when you first see him? Uh, when I first see him, I'm trying to see him if I recognize him. Okay. Um, and he's running. He's got long strides. He's athletic. You know, he's athletic. He was, he was in, uh, in great shape. He, he was in long strides. I recognize that run. But, you know, I mean. Okay. So what did you do next? So I continue to, to, to drive up to him. Uh, as we're getting closer, I recognize his haircut. Um, Where would you say you are on Burford when you get close to him? I was two houses down. Okay. Uh, I mean, it was the first uh, first 100, 150 feet, I would say. All right. Now, are you, how fast would you say you're going? At that point, I was probably riding the brake. Okay. Are you honking? No. Are you hanging out the window yelling? Nope. All right. Do you eventually pull up next to him? I do. Do you hit him with your truck as you pull up next to him? I do not. Where are you when you pull up next to him? I got closer to him. I was center line of the road. Okay. Um, and he was two feet off the edge of the road, on, on the road, but he was two, three feet off from the edge. Okay. As you're approaching him, are you making any observations? Yeah, I'm realizing... At this point, I'm realizing this is more likely the same guy that I saw. Okay. Um, but I'm also watching his hands. Why? Watching his motion. Make sure he's not armed. Okay. Um, I don't know what I'm coming into. And, you know, if it's the same guy for the 11th, then, you know, I have some suspicions that he, he may be armed and may act on it. Okay. What do you do next? So I come up to him, pull up <coughs> alongside of him. Okay. Uh, that moment... I recognize it is him. It is the same guy that I saw from the left. I uh, asked him, said, hey, what are you doing? What's going on? All right, stop. Are you still driving when you say this to him? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm coasting. I'm, I'm staying with him. I'm staying. He's right there at my door. Okay. Have you angled in front of him to block him? I'm parallel with him. Okay. You say, hey, go ahead. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, what's going on? What, what are you doing? You know, what's the tone of your voice when you just say Just like that. Hey, what's going on? I'm trying to stay. I'm trying to, like I said earlier, I'm using leaps. I'm trying to de-escalate. I know that this can be, you know, this, this could go any way, but I'm trying to find out what's going on. I'm trying to find out why, why he, why um, Mr. Albenzi's pointing down the road and he ran down the road. And if this is the same guy, then, you know, there's, there could be something to this. Let's find out what's happening. Okay. So you talk to him. What do you say? Yeah. So I said, "Hey, stop for a minute. Stop. Will you please stop." Well, he didn't say anything. He's. Can I quote you? It's stop for a minute. Stop. Please stop. Did you actually use the word "please"? I'm sure I did. I'm. I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to keep this as non-volatile as possible. So I'm. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm not screaming at the guy. I mean, I, I'm just trying to find out what's happening. Uh -huh. So he pulls up, and one thing I do notice when I start talking is uh, his demeanor. What do you mean he pulls up? What is I'm that sorry, when I, when I pull up, when I pull up alongside, not him, but when I pull up. Uh, but when I talk to him, when I first talk to him, he looks over to me, but uh, wasn't yelling at him. I mean, this first communication I had to him, and I was from four feet, five feet away from, you know, a uh, 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 road lane from him. And, uh, he looked over at me and he was... Permission to get down, Your Honor? Right here? I'll come up. I'll approach. How far are we? I was... You're in your truck. We're... I'm Turn and face this way. Yeah, it was... It was about, see? about that. No okay. further than where you are. Okay. What are you saying? I uh, just hey, what's going on? Hey, stop a minute. Stop a minute. I want to talk to you. What's he doing? That's about what I, I want to talk to you. Is actually what I was saying. Does he stop running at any point? No, he... At this point, he is still running, but I noticed... Um, that he's he looks very angry he's um, describe that what do you mean mad oh uh, it was it wasn't what I expected um, for just coming up and talking to him uh, it was uh, it was clenched teeth um, closed brow he was he was mad which made me think that right something something's happened I don't know why would okay it's not what I expected at all all right so it's unexpected so now what do you do? So kind of analyzing this, you know, and I ask him again or tell him, ask him again, hey, will you stop for a second? He stops or actually just turns and 
starts jogging back in a jog back or you know going back up towards um, Burford and Satilla. All right. Back so he you. starts to come back this way. Yes. Right. Does he speak to you? He did not speak to. You. Does he say what? What he, do you want? Yeah, he's never. Or leave me alone or anything? Nothing. All right. So he starts to run back this direction. What do you do? I back up. Okay. Put the truck in reverse and match up with him again. All right. Uh, as I come up to him, I start to ask him, hey, you know, what is, what's going on? What's going on? He turns and runs. Uh, turns and runs which way? Back to, we're still in Burford, back to Zellwood. Back down this way. Okay. All right. Now. I'm going to look. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Um, okay. When you pull up to him the second time and say, hey, what's going on? What do you mean by that question, what's going on? I wanted to know, main thing, what, why is the neighbor pointing down the road from the direction where he's at? I mean, it, it could be nothing but with Dad saying that the guy that ran by and then coming out, like what's he talking about, and seeing someone pointing down the road from 220 from where I encountered him uh, two, a week and a half prior going to the house that has been burglarized, I have had stuff stolen that he's been in on several times that, all right, yeah, we need, to, we need to figure out what's happening. Okay, have you now seen the video, you've been sitting here for the whole trial, have you seen the video from uh, Roddy Bryant's driveway? Yes. Were you aware of Mr. Bryan at, in that moment? No, no, I didn't. Did you see him on his porch? I didn't, I never met him before i didn't all right, well, that, all right so did you know him before this moment no all right or did you ever have any kind of facebook connection with him whatsoever no ever call him on the phone no okay and at this moment are you aware that he's on his porch and can see you and mr harper there together no all right stupid question time did you look at him and go let's go get in your truck help us out no okay so he starts to run back up the road mm -hmm. after the second attempt at a conversation before he ran up the road at that second attempt of conversation did he speak to you and say hey what what is it no what do you not. want or any kind of words whatsoever not yet no. did he make eye contact with you uh i'm sh yeah we made eye contact the first time okay. the second time i'm not sure i mean may have but um right. i was kind of watching his hands you know i was more keen to his hands okay this time when you're backing up, did you back up to try to block him? I did not. When he started going forward, did you move in front of him and try to block him? I did not. All right. What what did you do next? Uh, as he took as he took off running again, I put the truck in drive and stayed with him and kind of analyzing what's going on. Let's explain. Uh, just watching, trying to figure out what's happening, watching his demeanor or what you know if he's what's happening you okay. know what, what is happening like, all right you, did you eventually reach him yeah I, I decided to come up to him again to to get up next to him again and try one more time and just tell him hey the police are coming all right freeze yep how far away again are you from him when you come up next to him down burford road once again i was i was center line my i was tires were just on the other side of the center line so my body was center line and he was two three feet off the road so for me to you no further Two or three feet off the road? Was no, he on no, the he was, he was on the road, two to three feet from the edge. Okay. So he was, if this was the edge of the road, he was All right. running and, down the... And this far away about? No further than that. Yes. Four feet? Three four feet, feet? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Feet, three, four feet. Are you yelling? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm actually probably softer than I was the first time. All right. Just trying to... You said that you spoke to him now this third time when you get up here further down Burford Road. Does he stop running at any point up here? Yeah, so after I get up to him again, I say, hey, I, I just want to talk to you. I want to know what's going on. He finally stops. Okay. Right, great. Um, I want to talk to you. I want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So he finally, we finally stop. I ask what's going on. He never says anything to me. He's still looking at me angry. I'm thinking, man, man, this guy's, yeah, this could be volatile, you know. Let's, let's be kind of watching here. I ask him again, hey, what is what happened down the road? Why are people pointing down the road? You know, where are you running from? He didn't say anything, and he's still kind of in the same spot he is. He's not, um, he's not squaring up or anything like that. He's just standing there. And then I said, hey, the police are on the way. As soon as I said the police, he turned and ran straight back down 
Burford towards Holmes, Satilla. He turns back and comes back down Burford, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. The police are on the way, and then you say he turns and runs. As soon as I said the police are on the way, he turned and, and sprinted down Burford. Did that mean anything to you, the way he acted when you said that? It did. Like what? Well, why would you, if there's, if nothing happened down there, it, totality of circumstance, if nothing happened down there, if the neighbor wasn't pointing down the road, if I haven't seen him on video, and the possibility that he is down there again, all that might be in play. If, if not, that's fine. If I say the police are on the way and you take off and run, getting away, then it's, it's all right. There is, he, he may have been caught okay. in that house again and, and uh, there, he's up to, up to uh, probably been caught on that, on that property and, and is trying to evade, trying to, to avoid from being uh, stopped by the police. Well, obviously, because he's running. Try, trying to avoid being stopped by police. Mm -hmm. Did you, at any point in time, when you first approached him and made the first statement to him, hey, stop, please, or when you reversed and said, hey, we just want to talk to you, or when you met him up the road for the third time, at any point, did that gun come off the seat, come out the window? Was it shown, brandished in any way whatsoever? It was not. And, matter of fact, as I'm going down, like I said, it's a brand new truck. I just bought this truck, this vinyl seats, um, and I've never, the seats weren't used to it, having stuff wedged between it. The shotgun slid out from, from my seat and ended up in the floorboard. I couldn't grab it if I wanted to. Okay. <clears throat> Did you tell him you were going to shoot him? No. Okay. When he ran back, what did you do at that moment after he ran back down the road? At that moment when I told him the police were on the way, during that time, like I said, this time he stopped, I thought that we were about to have a, you know, we're about to communicate, see what's going on. About this time, my dad was getting out of the vehicle. I wasn't speaking to dad. He's probably talking to me. I wasn't paying attention to him. Okay. Um, so when Mr. Hart returned and started running down the road, about that time, dad was getting out of the vehicle. Uh, obviously to get out of the car seat and started clamoring into the climbing to the back of the pickup truck. Okay, what did you do? Watching dad and then I realized... What do you mean watching dad? Watching him try to get in the back of the truck. Oh, okay. Um, and then I realized that my shotgun was down on the floorboard. Uh, Mr. Arbery is running away. <clears throat> I take the gun out and put it back into my into my uh, seat. Put it wedged back on the seat. Okay. One time contact grab the firearm at that moment All right. and that was just to put it back in the seat there then what happened um, dad's climbing the truck I look down from all that look up and then there is a black Chevy pickup or black pickup at the time I thought and it was on the left side of Stilla if I'm looking down I'm sorry the left side of Burford if I'm looking down Burford towards Satilla and um, okay so this is the road yes sir you're looking down the road. That's correct. Not accurate distance here, but there's a Chevy truck. Mm -hmm. All right. The driveway is like this. Where is the Chevy truck? The road is like this. In the truck. Where's tr your truck? The truck was like that. Okay. On the left side. Look at the way I'm looking at it, on the left side of the road. Okay. So like what, you were. All right. And what's what are you watching happen? So I did I didn't I didn't know where the truck came from. I didn't know that it was, if it came, I was assuming that it came from the front of the neighborhood because I didn't see the vehicle come out anywhere. Okay. It was just, it was up here. It was just there. When I got done watching dad and, and getting that gun secured and look up, that truck was there and Mr. Arbery was at the truck and he ran, he was at the left side of the truck and where, I'm a couple hundred feet away from this. so. I knew that he was on the truck. He was at the vehicle. I couldn't see what he was doing, but he went to the other side of the vehicle and then turned and then continued again. Okay. Is, is there anything about his movement with the vehicle that was of interest to you? Yeah. I, so I was, I was. I didn't know if it, maybe if this guy was picking Mr. Arbery up 
or if he was involved with what hap whatever happened down there mm -hmm. and he was trying to stop him or I was scared that I thought it was Mr. Arbor you know one of my thoughts was I might hear a gunshot here you know so what's happening I was kind of just watching you know just like what's happening on on alert okay and uh, I watched that happen and then from where I was what it looked like is Arby got in front of the vehicle and continued down the road down towards uh, Satilla and Satilla and, and Holmes. Yeah. Okay. All right. What did you do? I got back in my truck. At that time, my dad is obviously seeing this as well, um, and he is telling me to go down there, go down there, go down there. As in? As in, drive the truck down to okay. this vehicle to All where right. uh, Mr. Arbery and the vehicle was. I do not. Why? I don't want to. I don't know what is going on with this guy and I don't want to escalate the situation I mean my thought at this point now is whatever happened up there there's a likelihood that something has happened because when I tell him when I tell him that the police are coming he takes off running and then interacts with his vehicle either trying to get in it or trying to avoid it or whatever happened something's not right I don't know what's going on the cops are coming from my thought at this point I'm not going to escalate this any further so I'm what's going, your goal at this point? My goal is to let the police know, now, is to let the police know where he's at and just kind of watch what's going on to see where he's at, right. to see where he's going. All right. Well, you say you don't want to go back down this way because of what you see. So how much time do you think it's been, if, if it's even possible to estimate, from the time that you first tried to talk to him to the last time you tried to talk to him, to the time that he runs back and engages with this black I would, ship? I, this is an estimate, maybe two minutes. Okay. If that. I, it, two minutes might be a long time. Okay. I, I can't put a time on it. All right. I really don't know. What do you do if you don't go that way? So I continue. I decided, I decided to go to continue down Burford to um, Zellwood take this time to kind of get my bearings to figure out what to do, what's going on here. Um, okay, so where do you go? So I turn, so on the map, you can see where Burford turns to Zellwood. All right. I turn onto Zellwood to the left and start going down that road. I'm okay. maybe 10 miles an hour. My dad's at the back of the truck. So I, I can't, you know, with a, with a new hip and stroke and all that. So I'm not going to go fast. You know, I don't want to, to okay. hurt him. So I'm making my way towards the front of the neighborhood. All right. Um, I get to Holmes. I decide I'm going to turn on Holmes to see more than likely this guy's running back out of the neighborhood. I'm going to go to Holmes because... I know that he is not behind me. I know that he's not where I could see down homes. I know where he's been. I can kind of figure out where he's at and then the police are going to be here at any second. If I encounter them before they encounter what's going on, I could tell them where I saw him last. Maybe we could finally have this guy called. All right, yeah. so your option is to, to go up to the front of the neighborhood. I could have, yes. Okay. Instead, you come down homes. Yes. All right. When you get on homes, do you see anything? I don't. No, right. I don't. What happens next? I drive down Holmes. I get about a house or two. Halfway down to, I call it a dog leg. It's a real light turn. It's got some bushes and trees. All right, there. step forward just for a second and tell me if I'm pointing in the area of the dog leg. Yes. Is that about right? Yes. Right, I'm going to note it with kind of a bend in it. Yeah. What do you mean by dog leg? I can't see the very end of the road. Okay. Uh, that's, so that's it's, a, it's a visual that you can't see past. That's correct. Okay. So you come down home, uh, uh, Holmes, you say. Uh -huh. Do you see anything? I don't. All right. What do you do? Continue. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm maybe riding a brake. Okay. You know, I'm just sitting. Um, All right. At any point in time, do you see something? Yes, yeah, about halfway down. Halfway uh, down, Holmes, to the dog leg. To the dog leg. Okay. I see Mr. Arbery. He is in the apex of the dog leg, turning. I don't see him directly at me. He is in the he's in the process of turning at this point. Is he on the road? 
He is. Okay, I'm going to put it over here to the side just so I can have some room. But you're saying that you see him turning? That's correct. Okay. You see him turn? Yes. All right. What so do you do? I continue, same speed, um, to continue to go that way. Uh, do you approach the dog leg? I, I get to the dog leg, yes. Do you see Roddy Bryan? You now know Roddy Bryan. Do you see the black truck at this moment? I do not. Meaning when he does the turn to come back down, do you see a truck following him? No, there's no truck at that point. Okay, so what do you do? I continue on down home. So at this point, I am driving towards Satilla, and for the last time that I saw, this was just a second or two that I saw Mr. Arbor because he was in that corner. So he was, a, he was in the middle of the turn and then a few strides, and then he was out of sight. Right, so stop. Do you... I say mash the gas, which the southerners say. Did you step on the gas and haul tail down the road? No. Okay. No, I stayed whatever where I was at. I was riding. I wasn't on the gas. I wasn't on the brake. All right. So he's at high. continuing to run. Do you come across the dog leg? Yes. All right. When you come around the dog leg, do you see anything? Yes. What do you see? I see the black vehicle. At this point, it is at Satilla and Holmes. Okay. It has at this point turned and is coming to me from Satilla and Holmes towards uh, Zellwood and I'm coming from Zellwood towards Satilla. All right so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a where we got is a Chevy so I'm gonna put a C right there so you see a vehicle down where at the end of, of Holmes on Satilla side. Okay and where is Mr. Arbery? Mr. Arbery is with the vehicle Front quarter panel. What side? Driver's side. Driver's side, so over on this side. Yes. Okay. Doing what? He is running with the truck. Um, and then as we're getting closer, he looks like he's he's grabbing the truck at that at that point. What are you thinking? I'm if, thinking he's mm -hmm. it looked like he was trying to get in the door. If he wasn't the vehicle wasn't behind him, he wasn't behind the vehicle, he was with the vehicle and he was on the vehicle. Um, there's an open yard right there. This was this was about where the scene happened. Okay. And so everything was open, but he was with the vehicle as it's coming, and they are slowly. They were on the right side, which would be his right side, and they're on coming. the right side of the road. Yes. On the correct car the right, side right, of the road. Yes. Okay. And slowly, and he wasn't. It wasn't a run. It was an idle pace, I guess, for a vehicle. You know, I mean, he was uh -huh. at a job. But uh, he was with the vehicle, and they were coming into my lane. All right. Are you at all wondering why Mr. Arbery is not going somewhere other than this vehicle? That was my first thought. I, I don't know why he was. Okay. It, I mean, it was, it was, my thought was, why is he attacking a truck? Why is he hitting a truck? All right. Now, you're coming toward this truck now I was coming to yeah I was yes I was coming to the truck until it stopped all right are you communicating with this truck at all no. doing any kind of signals not arms out the window telling him to do anything no is he signaling to you can no. you even see the driver inside no truck? I didn't I did not and no I didn't see the signals okay What happened, uh, uh, let, me, let me ask this question. When you get to the point where you see Mr. Arbery do the turnaround up here, do you oh, yeah. shout anything out at him? No, I, I, don't, I don't believe I did. No. You lean out the window with a gun or anything like that? No. Okay. No. How much time would you say, you think it was, you know, you estimated two minutes at this phase here. How much time would you say that you've spent now coming around to this moment? It was probably the same. It was whatever, a vehicle idling. Okay. Or, you know, getting, you know, coming through there, I, was, I might have been on the gas, you know, 10 miles an hour. But it was... Can you hear minutes. anything? Is your dad talking to you? Do you hear anything? I, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. I, that, was not, that was not my... Do you have a seat? Oh, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> awkward with this board. Yeah. All right. Once you see what's happening here, what happens next? I'm at the point I'm coming to a stop. Okay. I am in the going to Satilla Drive. I'm in the left lane. All right. Um, 
I'm probably 20 feet, 25, 30 feet from where I stopped at the situation at the time of the shooting. I'm back that way, but they are coming down Holmes from Satilla. Yes. And as he is on this truck, they are slowly angling into my lane. From the, from the right side of the road, the correct side to go this direction. Mm -hmm. Real shallow angle like that. Into your lane. Yep. Okay. So they get to where it gets to where I'm pretty much in the they're in the front of my vehicle. I'm at a stop. I'm thinking, hey, I hope he doesn't hit my truck. You know, I'm, because obviously the driver of the Chevy, to be um, Mr. Bryan, is involved with Arbery. Arbery is involved with Mr. Bryan. They, they, I don't think they see me at all. I don't think there's, they're, they're not. There's no correlation to me here. They get to ten feet of my vehicle, and Arbery splits from the vehicle and runs down my passenger side between my truck and the ditch. Okay. So up push this side in the grass of the the grass side of the road? Yes. Okay. So he runs that way. What about the black truck? The black truck pulls off, gets back yeah. into his correct lane. Okay. And Mr. Arby starts running. Yep. And then the last thing they're heading to the dog leg. Yep. And the last I see is um, him in front of the black truck and the black truck is continuing but it wasn't accelerating or anything like that okay. they broke off from each other at that point and you said they were heading toward the dog leg towards the dog leg towards Zellwood did they go around the dog leg yes from did, yes did you lose sight of them uh, yes okay what did you do at that moment uh, continued I'm not exactly sure exactly what I did at that moment but I pulled the vehicle back up 10 feet and stop and park from there. I uh, pulled the vehicle back up. What do you mean? Or where? No, I'm sorry. Uh, what well, after they passed, I continued to go forward, up uh, forward to Satilla Drive. Right. Before you moved forward to Satilla, did you throw it up in reverse and start trucking backwards to go? I did not. Why not? No. So I'm once again. I don't want to escalate the situation. I, this is getting out of hand. This guy's now looks like he's trying to get in this vehicle verified from what I suspected on Burford when he was up there okay and uh, the way that he interacted with the vehicle and then my past experiences with him is no I'm not I, I don't I don't want to get involved in this I don't want to get with this unless I have to as they passed you mm -hmm. as mr. Arbery passed you did you roll the window down and hang the shotgun out the window no did you pull the shotgun and aim it at him I did not did you yell at him or say anything to him I don't don't believe I did. I don't. I, well, no, I did. Okay. Um, you get to the end of where you said you parked. Yes, sir. All right. So now you're down here. I'm just going to move it over. So there's our street. You're parked down here. Again, here's the dog leg. All right. They're out of sight. Yes. All right. Why did you park there? <clears throat> he is out of sight at this point. They're gone. They're no longer. Uh, there's nothing going on in front of me. I'm still under the impression that the police are coming. This guy's obviously something's not right. He seems dangerous to me. He's trying to get in this vehicle. Um, I'm still under the impression the police are coming. I could see down to my house. I could see down to this dog leg. I could see Burford and I could see the rest of Satilla. This is a good chunk of the neighborhood and I know where he just left from. If the police come, which I would assume would come off of um, Highway 17 and come down Satilla Drive, past my house to where they were encountering me where I'm at, I can give them a, a good description of what's happening or where they at. Hey, it's down this road or this road or this road or that road. But I decided to stay right there where I was at. Right, and where is your house compared to where you're seated in your car at that time or where you're parked? It's three houses down on Satilla. I could see it looking across that open yard. Okay. Um, I can see the yard. I can see the house there, man. Okay. Shouting distance from. All right. So now you're parked. You've taken up view. What do you do? Get out of the vehicle. Analyzing, seeing what's the situation. You're seeing if Dad, what's going on with Dad. Uh, at that point, I said, "Where are the cops? Where are the police?" Dad said, "I, I don't have the phone." Well, all right. 
the cops have me call. Let me grab my phone. I go to reach for my phone and I look back. I don't know if Dad yelled or or if I was looking down the road, but I look down the road and I see Mr. Arby running back towards me. All right. Start so he is now coming back across the dog leg. Yes, he's yeah, he's visual on the dog leg. Okay. Have you do you know anything that has happened on the other side of the dog leg? I do not. Okay. But you say you see him running back towards you. Yes. All right. Yes. What happens? I yell at him to stop. Stop where you're at. Stop. And I'm at this point, hey, stop. More of a, more of a, more of control. Where is he running? Where in the, where is he running towards you? Is he in the road? He's, is he in grass? No, he's in the road. He's in the road on the same, I want to say he's in the same lane. Uh, he wasn't any fur. he wasn't in the other lane. It might have been center lane to the center of the same lane, but he wasn't in the grass, wasn't in the ditch, wasn't in the center. Lane. Okay. He's running towards you. How far does he get towards you before you start saying stop? In the straightaway, so it was probably 30 yards. Okay. And you, again, tell us what you do, show us how you do it. Yeah, so I yell at him, stop. You know, stop right there, stop right there. He's continuing, we were in eye contact. Um, He's getting closer. I'm thinking he's he's not looking left. He's not looking right. It's not a and the way he's running. It's not a full sprint. It's not a jog. The best way to describe it is like uh, you got a running back. You're about to throw a pass, and they're they're staged up. You know, they're they're kind of on their toes, ready to bolt. Mm -hmm. He was at that moment. He was at he was in that stance, I guess, or in that run. Okay, and so 30 yards. Mm -hmm. You say he's making eye contact? He is. With you? Yes. You say? To stop. Stop. Stop where you're at. Okay. He's he continues. Coming. He gets about where you're at from me at this point. This is, and this is a second, two seconds. What do you mean this is two seconds? To how long it took from me yelling at him to stop to realizing that he is coming to me. That okay. I need to do something about this. All right. At this point, he's continuing still eye contact. I'm at my truck. Doors open. I'm on the inside of my door. I see he's coming. I go to grab for my shotgun. As soon as I turn and go for my shotgun, he turns. At this point, he made it to about 10 feet from the back of my truck. My dad's yelling at him, and he runs back. He runs back towards Dogwood. Goes back towards uh, Zellwood on 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 Holmes, Holmes obviously. Holmes, yes. So he comes. <clears throat> I knew I was going to do it. It's the permanent. He runs down here to a point, you're saying stop, and then you say he turns around and goes back. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. <coughs> what do you think, when did he turn? Uh, At what point did he turn? He was about, like I said, about 10 feet from the back of my truck, but my action of going into my truck is what made him turn, I believe. Okay. He turns. Then what happens? Starts running back down until uh, I pull the shotgun out and I start going down there to see what's happening. And I said, no, I need to stay. I need to stay where I'm at. My dad's up here in the back of the truck. I know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on down there. And this guy is still irrational. It's, it's still not, something's still not right about this. I'm gonna stay right where I'm at. Okay. So I put the shotgun right back back on the door, pick up the phone, call 911. Okay. As soon as I call 911, I dial, I pick it up to the ear, and I see Mr. Arbery turn and come back. I don't know how long it took. I mean, seconds. It was less than... Okay. So he's gone back. When you told him to stop the first time on Holmes, now he's gone back across the dog leg, right which is up here. Back across. Now he's coming back. Okay. This is now the second time he's coming back down Holmes. Yes. Okay. You said you just given the cell phone to your dad. Yes. How is it that you decided to call nine one one at that moment? It was prior to the second encounter, or prior to the encounter I just had with him, yeah. I asked my dad. I said, "Where are the police?" And he said that he didn't have his phone. And I realized that he has not called 911. And actually, as that was going on, I had to crawl into the crawl into my truck 
and go to the passenger floorboard where, the, where my phone <coughs> was and slid off and uh, called 911. And as soon as I called 911, I looked and Mr. Arby has already passed. The dog leg was coming back again. Okay. So when he comes back again across the dog leg, did you see anything behind him? No. Do you see the black truck anywhere? I did not. Other than Mr. Arbery, do you see anything? Uh, no, it was just I was focused on Mr. Arbery. And how is he coming back? Same same way that I just mentioned to you prior. He was in a jog at a pace. Okay. Um, like I said, he was like spring loaded, like you know, like like a running back, like he's, he's ready to ready to, to to bolt or to move any way he wanted, you know. But he was focused on me. Right now. Seen the video, the video showing yes. him running towards you. Right. Is that what you believe to be that this moment now? Yeah, this, yeah, this is that moment. Okay. Yes. As he's running towards you at this moment, what are you thinking? That I'm pretty sure that he is going to attack. What makes you think that? Uh, the totality of the circumstance, what I just witnessed with the truck, what happened on the 11th, the way that he acted on the 11th, and then his eye contact on me, and not looking left or right, or pivoting and avoiding where I'm standing, where I'm at on this truck. Are there, in your mind at that moment, are there places that Mr. Arbery could run to? Yes. Are there locations available to run two or three? Yes. Like what? Yards. There's yards, there's ditch. Um, the ditch that was right there at that scene is shallow. Like when you run back to where I saw him with Mr. Uh, Brian's truck, one of the things that kind of threw me off was as they're coming, he wasn't blocked. He could have went into this ditch here and, and into this open yard. Is a very shallow ditch. It's probably from mound to mound, four feet wide, but it was very maybe two feet deep all the way across, and it was dry. You could hop across it. Um, at any point, do you do you see in the video? We, we all see in the video where you raise your shotgun. Yes. You see that? Yes. Okay. Do you remember doing that? I do. Why'd you do that? He was closing in at this point I've yelled at him to stop several times this one again I screamed at him stop screamed at him, stop he is focused in on me and he's at this gate where it, he's looking like he's about to run he has a possibility to get this burst out and if he gets this burst out at this point at this point when I pulled the shotgun I wouldn't have time to react if he wanted to get on me or to pull a gun or have a knife <clears throat> or if he wanted to do ill will at this point i would this is when i needed to show him to to to, to deter him to stay to do not come at me how do you know how do you know at this point you have to do that because uh, everything that's happened everything that, that is going on and him closing in on me like no, i mean how do you know at this point that you have to raise the gun or he'll be on, he could be on you like that from training from training and prior experience, there's a two, there's a thing called tour drill. A what? Tour drill. Okay. A 21 foot roll, I think, is popular. Area. Okay. It says that any average person, it takes 21 feet for somebody to react. If somebody, it's an average of 21 feet for somebody to react to pull a weapon and fire two shots at somebody that charges you uh, with a knife or anything like that. Mr. Arby's already running. He's at a pretty good clip. He's directed at me. He sees that I have a weapon. I'm yelling at him to stop. And he's continuing. At that you say point, he I, sees that you have a weapon. Mm -hmm. How do you know that he sees you have a weapon? What do you do? Do you I do had it? I had the weapon out at this point. And I had it down. At a position like this. Port arms is what they call it. Okay. And it's blatant that I had this shotgun. When you raise it at that moment, for the reasons that you did, does it have the effect that you hoped it would? Yes, it did. Which was what? It did. Uh, he angled. He no longer went my direction. Okay. As soon as I drew, as soon as I drew the weapon on him, you could see in the video 
that he darts to the left and darts to the right and then commits to the right. And he does that. As soon as he darts, I put the weapon back down and move away from my vehicle. I make a distance. I'm thinking he's going to go across this yard. What, what, what if he did? I'm just going to let him keep on going. Let him, let him run on by like I've done on Burford, like I let him do on uh, on Holmes when him and, and uh, Chevrolet passed When you say you let him do it, you mean when you were on Burford and he ran away from you? Yes. You mean you, you didn't follow him? I did not. You didn't shoot him? No. And on Holmes, is that what you mean when he ran away from your direction? That's right. Didn't follow him? No. Didn't shoot him. So if he comes around the right side of the truck and decides to bolt through the yard, could it was the yard open? It was. And if he did that, what would you do next? I would watch him run on by. It was at this at this point I know the police are coming out and I know they're gonna come from the front of the neighborhood and if he turns right, he is going out of the neighborhood. He's and I could watch him, I could see him, see where he's going, and he's gone. He is no longer a threat to that vehicle that he was just interacting with. He's no longer a threat to my father or myself. If he turned left, I know which way he went. Please come in. Hey, right down there. Or if he turns around and goes back the other way, he's that's where he's at. He's coming towards you. He raises a shotgun. Yes. To deter, he has the effect. He turns. Now where does he go? He makes it to the corner of the road. He never goes into the grass. Okay. Straightens up and starts running back straight to the truck where my father's in the back of the right. yeah. You've seen the video. I don't want to ask you to interpret what you've seen on the video. I want you to tell us what you were seeing at that moment. Okay. When he runs up the right side of the truck, what are you thinking? That he is... Uh, <clears throat> after I determine, or after I point the shotgun at him, when he angles and then he turns and starts making it directly to the truck, I'm thinking, well, he's going to, he's coming back to the truck again. My father's in the back of the vehicle. So? So what? Your dad's in the back of the vehicle, so? Yeah, so he's, the path he's making, he's going to make contact with the vehicle or going to be around the vehicle. He can jump up, grab dad, or still under pressure that he might be armed, that he could run up and shoot. I'm not going to be able to see him at this point. He's going to be, I have a vehicle between me and him. So at this point, I leave, I'm a little past my, my door. You are, if this is your door uh -huh. and this is the truck, at some point, are you in the crux of the door? I was when he was running, yeah. running to me when I drew the weapon. I was right at the outside of the crux, right at the edge of the door jam. Okay. And then when he turned and went to the passenger side of my vehicle when he flexed, I went ahead and moved the center of the road is what I did. Oh, outside of this? Why? Yeah, I was gaining distance. I was making distance. It was obvious. I, I thought it was obvious at the time that he was going to glance and just go through that yard. Okay. That, that was my, that was what I was thinking was going to happen. You said your dad's in the back of the he truck. Is. Stupid question. Do, yeah. do you love your dad? Yeah. Were you worried about him? Yes, I was. So you come here and now what? So, yeah, I'm on that side of the vehicle. He's running back. I'm losing... I'm not going to see what he's doing, what he's capable of, what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to do. What do you mean you're losing? I'm losing visual, losing sight of him, losing where his hands are. Because of what? Because of my vehicle. Okay. Because of my truck. All right, so where do you move to? I move to the front of my truck, and at this point I'm thinking either he's, he's on my dad at this point, or he is going to run by, or he's going to see that I have gone to the front of my truck and he's going to finally turn and glance, you know, and, and or glance to, to go across that yard. Uh, I don't know, you know, he could, he can try to jump in my truck from the passenger side. He could lay down, he could draw a weapon if he's at this point. This is the point that's critical that I think. All right, so just this to, critical point. to be deliberate about this, yeah. if this is the front hood of your truck, this, this, on which side? Front right. Okay. So the steering wheel's right here. Okay, yes, sir. Gotcha. This is the passenger side. And you're back over here. That's correct. Okay. You're saying you can't see what happens. That you, you can, 
get in the truck. Is this in your mindset at all? It was, yes. It was. And what is this? It's hiding. It's hiding or being away from me, cover, concealment. Cover, concealment. Yeah, he's covered. I can't, he's concealed. I can't see him. I can't see what his actions are or what he's doing. I don't, can't see his hands. can't see what he's got. I'm still under the impression that he might be armed. Yeah. He's close to my father. I can't see what's happening. I need to see what's going on. And he has access to my vehicle, which is still running, by the way. So what do you do? So I go to the front of my vehicle. All right. Front where? Uh, front left corner panel, turning into it, going to the front of the hood. All right. So if if we're here, this is the front left of the quarter panel, and this is the right front quarter panel mm -hmm. from here to here. Where do you come to uh, on the front of your car? Right to the I guess the, the line. right here. So I'm now standing at the front mm -hmm. quarter panel. Yeah. Now I'm back away from it. Where are you? Uh, right at the light right at the corner of that okay, corner right here yep where's your gun uh it's in my hands port arms port arms is what it's, i'm down i got it down both hands on it hand on grip and you know on both and grips. what are you doing coming around i get to it i was going to get to the front to the center of the vehicle at that point he was right there if he decided to turn he'd see me and continue running okay that was what i would what assume happens? was going to happen I get to the front of the truck, and by the time I get to the front of the truck, he is at the front corner panel on the right-hand side, and he turns and is on me, and it's on me, I mean, in a flash, I mean, immediately on me. On you doing what? He grabs the shotgun, and I believe I was struck on that, that, that first instance that, that we made contact. Um, what were you thinking at that moment? I was thinking of my son. It sounds weird, but that was the first this, this, this first thing that hit me. What did you do? I shot. Why? He, he had my gun. He, he struck me. It was obvious that he was... Uh, it was obvious that that he was attacking me, that if he would have got the shotgun from me, then it was a, this is a life or death situation. And I, I'm gonna have to, to stop him from doing this, so I shot. Did he stop when you shot? He did not. No, he Do, did not. Can, 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 you, can you remember everything, every hand, every movement, can you remember those things? No, I know that I was, uh, I know that I got hit, and I know that I was, I was weaponry weapon retention we were talking about it earlier yeah with a shotgun or a rifle it's called the push pull method and uh when somebody's got a weapon you're, you go to port arms and uh you push out and you pull down is what you're taught um i was a stickler with it with everybody that we trained that was my biggest fear that somebody's on a boat and they come up because the pistol's holstered Rifle or shotgun, you got it in your hand. It'd be easier for somebody to get it from you. So I always exclusively train people to do this push-pull. So it's natural for me. It's you know, it's, it's trained into it's muscle memory. And when this happened, I was in Port Arms. I got struck, and I remember when I came down, I got hit in the top of the head, and he had the weapon in his hand. So I pushed and pulled, still getting hit. And did you get it free from his grip? I don't believe I did. I don't know. I'm. I don't know exactly when or where or if he continued grabbing. But we were together. We were locked up. He was on that shotgun. Do you? You've seen the video we talked about where you see you're being pushed across. Do you remember that? Do you remember where your bodies were moving? I know that I was. I know that he was. I didn't know where I was at, but I knew that he was on me. I knew that I was. I was losing this. I knew that if I was getting tripped, if I would have tripped, or if he would have got a lucky strike on my head, or if I would have have lost that grip on that shotgun, that I've um, that I would have been shot, or I would have been I would have been in serious trouble at that point. I knew that he was uh, I knew that he was overpowering me, but I didn't know which direction or um, or what mechanics he was doing to to overpower me. Do you? At that time, did you remember how many times 
you shot the gun? No, I didn't. I, Did I thought I shot twice. And but, but you shot it. You you I shot it. Yes. Yes. Do you, you know, like I said, do you remember how many times you did? I, I thought it was twice until later on speaking with the investigator that I realized that it was three shots. But um, I shot the, fr the first shot. I knew I shot. And then the second shot, I shot again because I was still... I was still fighting. I was still, he was all over me. He was still all over that shotgun um, and he was not relenting. So I had, I shot again to stop him. That sec that third shot, which I thought was second, that, that final shot, he disengaged. And at that point, he let go. He turned and continued to run down, um, down some till. And at that point, I was in shock. I, 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 I turned around. I don't know where I was going. My dad came out, and he was yelling that he's got his hand under him. I turned around. We got over there and uh, pulled his hand out from under him and realized that he was deceased. And I looked up, and the police were right there. Um, I stood up, realized that you know that I got a gun here and, and uh, that he is that he's passed away the police are on scene so I walked over to the side and put my shotgun down after that it was there's a blur it's it a shotgun I mean it's a blur do you remember speaking to the police on the scene I do do you remember going back and giving a statement to officer no Hilly? yes did Officer Nohilly give you an opportunity to reject talking to him? Uh, he did. did. Did you agree to talk to him? Yes. Do you remember having to sign a form and all that technical legal stuff? Yeah, he told me, uh, he gave me my Miranda rights and I agreed to him and agreed to, to uh, make a statement. What was it like sitting in the room with Detective Nohilly trying to recall the specifics of this event? Uh, I struggled. I, I was trying to give him as much information as possible. Um, I thought that I did a good job until I've read the statement. thought you did a good job of what? At, at giving him oh. a, a, clear in, a clear idea of what happened. Reading the statements now, um, I was all over the place all over the place in what way in describing what happened giving the dates and the timeline of what happened uh, it seemed that I was speaking it seemed like I was reliving the situation I would go to one thing I would say I saw him on on Burford and then we lost the phone but when I grabbed the phone on you know it was it was just everywhere I was everywhere and it was under stress I was under this was less than two hours after after shooting, you know, I mean, I, I was, I was not in my right mind at that. <clears throat> Travis, you you understand that you've been charged with having an agreement of sorts with Ronnie Bryan. Objection. What's the objection? Well, we can get it. It's the way you're describing the charges. Okay. All right. Let's just take. All right. <coughs> Travis, did you ever, ever coordinate with Ronnie Bryan to box in a Mont Arbery? Yes, no, sir. Did you ever do anything to try to use him as a bookend to try to corner a Mont Arbery? I did not. Did you want to stop Ahmad Arbery and talk to him? I did. Did you want to stop him and hold him so the police could come and arrest him? That, that was my plan, yes sir. And by hold him, I mean, you know, detain him, not let him go Objection. anywhere, at least keep an eye on him. Leading. Sustained. Yes. Okay. No, no, don't answer, it's been sustained. Yeah. Sorry. Been sustained. Other than the time that you put your shotgun on your shoulder, in the time that you had it in your hands when Mr. Arbery grabbed it, did you ever pull out your gun? No, I did not. <clears throat> I, 
I had my gun out and was walking towards the dog leg, the first encounter we had on Satilla, on the homes, but he was already running away. He didn't see it. And Fair I, enough. I asked you, you to know, pull it was, out. Yeah, but. But that, you, I think you've explained you're just putting it back in the truck. Did you leave the house that day with the intention to kill the guy I did that not. your dad mentioned to you? I did not. Did you leave the house that day with Objection the Objection leaving. It's not telling him that he did in fact leave the house leave the house that day. It's did you leave the house that it's a, day? It's leaving. It's sustained. It's a yes or no question. Don't ask me yes or no question, it's a leading. Yeah. Well it's not a leading if the answer could be yes or no. But I'll We can debate it all you want, Mr. Sheffield. I understand. It's sustained. I understand. Okay. Give me one second, please. <coughs> Recess. Uh, come back for additional evidence. All right, for adjourned. Let's go ahead and take 10 minutes. We're in recess. So you can go ahead and step down.
We are back on defense president represented by council. Yes, your honor. I made the state aware that I wanted to make a brief motion. Um, um, first of all, the state had alluded earlier in the course of the trial that they intended to ask Mr. McMichael whether or not he said the ex expletive over uh, Mr. Arbery's body. The state must have a good faith basis to ask that question that that actually could be evidence in the trial. Um, if the court recalls, that was a statement made by Agent Dial during the preliminary hearing about where that who said it. Um, and I'm saying the only person that heard it the only, would have been the co-defendant. The only person that heard it had been the co-defendant, and so it's my understanding that the co-defendant is not testifying. There is no basis then to try to get the statement in. And so for that reason, there's no good faith basis to ask the question. It's just going to inject that issue, which is currently not in the case. Uh, and so, so this is something that we're asking the court to limit the state from even asking the question. I certainly know what the answer will be, but um, I think it's even going beyond what the state could say is a good faith basis for this question because the only place it comes from is from Mr. Bryan. Number two, Your Honor, is I believe through the course of that direct examination, we did not put Mr. McMichael's character into evidence. Uh, we did not talk about uh, things that would open the door to what the state has previously withdrawn as its 404B statements and other um, postings or um, videos or things that they withdrew. Um, similarly, to ask the court to have a candid conversation about that now, the state indicated that if it was going to do something like that, it would certainly make the court and the defense aware, and we could hear that outside the presence of the jury. I bring it to the court's attention because I think that we have not opened the door. We did not put his character into issue. now. Uh, we're asking the court to hear from the state and kind of see where we are. From the state. Judge, he just finished his direct examination. I've got a half an hour worth of cross, and then we're probably going to break for the evening. If I may, I'd like to be able to think and review my probably 40 pages of notes before I go ahead and let the court know what my plan is for the continuation of cross tomorrow. I will not go into it today. We'll address it in the morning, then. Thank you, Judge. All right. All right. We're going to release our other witnesses, then, since it sounds like we're going to stop on Mr. McMichael today. It's, it sounds like sounds like it. Good. Probably be uh, more than enough for the day. Very good. That's really for the day, correct? Not permanently. What? Yeah. For the day. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. <coughs> All right, witnesses on the stand. I understand we are ready to go. Yes,
Uh, we are ready for the continuation of the evidence uh, from the state. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Michael, my name is Linda Dunikoski. If you can't hear me or I ask you a question you don't understand, let me know, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, you just testified under oath that you are not going to chase or investigate someone who is armed. That's correct, right? Yes. All right. And not once during your direct examination did you state that your intention was to effectuate an arrest of Mr. Arbery until your attorney asked you that leading question. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. And Kim Ballesteros, you know her from the neighborhood, right? She I lives, do. She lives down the street? Yes. Okay. And you know that she had her purse stolen on January 29th of 2019, right? I was under the impression that it was in the summertime. Okay. And you understand that she posted this to Facebook on January 30th, 2019, all about the fact that she left her car unlocked and somebody went into it and stole her purse. Okay. Do you remember that? Uh, it sounds familiar. I knew that uh, it was under assumption that it was under her car, so yeah, that's probably not right. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that you posted in response to that? I do not. Do you remember that your post was playing with fire on this side of the neighborhood? Uh, yes. Now you talked about crime in Satilla Shores, but isn't it true that Satilla Shores only had one burglary call in all of 2019 and it was a false alarm? I heard that there were several burglaries. Uh, from my mother and then from hearing from the other neighbors and then seeing a burglary on the, the Facebook page that was what was what uh, is what that I was heard about the neighborhood so you're telling this jury that what you heard was rumor from other people it was what I was told from my mother and seeing on Facebook and from the neighbors okay so you don't know this from the police that's correct I didn't hear it from the police no okay and so you understand that there were only four entering auto complaints in all of 2019 in Satilla Shores. I knew that there were several entering autos, yes ma'am. Okay, so we have Kim Ballesteros, and she was in January, right? That's what she said, yes ma'am. Okay, and then we have the Herndons, and they were in December, like December 7th or 8th of 2019. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. Okay, and the Herndons had left their car unlocked in their driveway, and it was the white guy who had come up and gone into it, right? I didn't know that the vehicle was unlocked or the race of who was suspected. I just knew that they had stuff stolen from their vehicle. So it's fair to say you had incomplete information about who was committing the crimes in Satilla Shores? Yes. Okay. So, the information you had being incomplete, you started making assumptions about who must be doing this, right? I didn't make assumptions at that point until February 11th when I saw what I saw that evening. And then you assumed this must be the person responsible for all the crime within Satilla Shores. I was under the assumption that having Mr. Arby being seen multiple times on the video on 220 Satilla Drive and the stuff stolen out of that house, that he has continued to come back to that house and to be, I guess, as brazen as after I witnessed him go through that yard and look, look to be creeping coming in and then putting the lights on him and then him acting like he was armed under my, the way that he reached for his pants and then ran into that house and then walking around afterwards seeing that and knowing that that he saw me that I saw him and that he continued to go on and that he's been there several times led me to believe that yes that that these burglaries that I've been hearing about and that I knew about at 220 could have been him because I saw him and, and this is verified from the police and from the videos from that evening and from talking to uh, Officer Rash and Mr. Uh, Al Benzi that they've seen him as well that 
Yeah, this more this is a probability that this is the guy. So it's let's go ahead and break that down, okay? Your mom and dad, well, your father especially, told you that Officer Rash had stopped by, correct? On the left? No, no, I'm sorry. Bad question. You understand that Officer Rash in December met with your father and told him um, about the fact that Mr. English had items stolen off of his boat and Mr. English suspected his subcontractors. I didn't know where my dad got that information. I did okay. not know that it came from Rash. And I believe it was my mother that told me that. And then my dad started repeating it afterwards. But it was my, it was my mother that, that was the first one. Okay, so your mom told you that Larry English had items stolen off of his boat and suspected his subcontractors, correct? No, he's, that there was stuff stolen off the boat. And that then when she said that, there has been people in this house. I didn't know who stole but I just know that there was, they have been people in that house, mm -hmm. verify that people have been in the house, and then there's been stuff been stolen. And that's multiple people in the house, correct? Yes. Okay, so not just Mr. Arbery. That's correct. Okay. Um, so we have, you knew about the white couple who had gone in? I knew that there was several people, I didn't know I didn't know race, I didn't know couple, I just knew that there was, there's been several people seen at that house at that time. So several different people in your mind had been going into that open, unsecured construction site during this period of time? That's correct. So any one of these people could be the people who had taken the items off of their English boat? Absolutely. So I wanted to ask you about um, July 13th and the man who was homeless under the bridge? Yes. White, black, Asian, Hispanic? He was white. Okay. And then you talked about um, the ATM situation. That was when in 2008? 2008. Okay. City of Pascalua? It was. Pascagoula. Pascagoula. Thank you, Pascagoula. City of Pascagoula. Um, did you report that at I, that time? I did not. And the two people who had come up to you, black, white, Asian, Hispanic? Uh, they're black. And now in 20, I think 11, you said um, some guy attempted to get into your car. Mm -hmm. Was this person black, white, Asian, Hispanic? He's white. Did he appear to be homeless? No. Okay. No, he did not. Do you appear to be a worker? He seemed to be strung out, I would, I would say. Um, it was quick, it was night. And you did not report it to the police or the city of Pascagoula? Uh, Jackson County Sheriff's Department. I contacted a co-worker and let him know what was going on, what happened, where I was at, and he said, yeah, we'll, we'll go check the scene on it. I didn't call emergency line or, I, I called uh, deputy sheriff, a friend of mine. Okay, so you had a friend who then went and checked it out, so no I police report. Did. I thought he made a report. Um, here once again at States Exhibit 147. Mr. Sheffield played part of it for you earlier. Do you remember that? Uh, which one was it? This is your father's July 13, 2019 911 call. Yes, sir. Okay. And so I think we got about one minute into it. And uh, my son and I just discovered a guy. We think he may be living on the uh, bluff. Creek Bridge on 17. We just went up there and made contact with a real shady looking fella. And he, you know, possibility he may be the one that's been breaking into all these audible fields right there at night. Just wanted to make somebody aware that there was somebody living under there. Was that the remainder of the call where he called the guy under the bridge a shady looking guy? There's, seems there's a few more to it, but yeah, I mean, that was 
that was continuing that of that uh, audio, obviously. And you made contact with the shady looking white guy under the fancy bluff bridge while armed, correct? I did, yes ma'am. And your father had his gun on him too, correct? I believe he did. I, I would assume he did, yes ma'am. Okay. And did you brandish and show your weapons to the man? I did not. This was just some sort of pleasant conversation with the homeless guy under the bridge is what you're telling this jury. Yeah, it came pleasant once I split between him and the and the machete that he had there. And uh, asking what's going, you know, how's he doing, what's going on? He was, uh, he stayed right where he was and continued to fish, and I didn't see a threat. Okay, but your dad still decided afterwards mm -hmm. to call 911. Yes. Not before. We walked up on the guy. We we didn't, uh, you know, once we investigated, once we saw that there was somebody there and what was happening, yeah, we still called to uh, to let the police know what's going on. You took it upon yourselves to go ahead and investigate it, correct? Yeah, well, yes, we did. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about your time in the Coast Guard. So in the Coast Guard, when you first start out, it's E1, E2, E3, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then you become a petty officer at E4. Yes, ma'am. Now, within the petty officer category, it goes all the way up to like E9. E9. And then you can go all the way up to a uh, warrant officer, correct? You can. All right. And you had been in for about um, nine years? It is, yeah, nine and some change, yes, ma'am. Right. So you had to do standard recruit training in 2007. Yes. And then machinery technician training uh, from April 14th of 2008 to July 3rd of 2008. That sounds right. And then July 13th through August 13th of 2009, basic boarding officer, correct? Yes. And the basic boarding officer, do you take that when you become an E4 or no. before that? Uh, no, you take it after you become an E4. If you're, if the uh, Commanding officer decides that you would be a good candidate to go to it. It's not mandatory. Okay. And then in 2010, from August 2nd, 2010 through September 10th, 2010, you had air conditioning and refrigeration classes during that period of time. I did. All right. So when you left the Coast Guard, your rank was still E4, right? Yes, ma'am. And that is a machinery technician. Uh, that was the right, yes, or yes, the right, and the right was E4, yes, ma'am. So back in 2009, when you take in your basic boarding officer classes, you understood what the Fifth Amendment was, right? Yes, ma'am. The right to remain silent. That's correct. And you heard Jason Seacrest testify that um, law enforcement cannot force anyone to speak with them. That's right. Okay, so you learned as part of your time in the military that you can't force people to speak with you. That's correct. Okay. And that if someone walks away, you have to let them walk away. Yes. In fact, you were trained that displaying a weapon may be considered psychological coercion, which is prohibited by the courts and as a law enforcement officer may be grounds for suppressing evidence. Isn't that what you were taught? Under certain situations, yes ma'am. <coughs> In addition, you were also taught that the best weapons retention technique is to not make your weapon accessible to anyone, right? Under certain situations, yes ma'am. And you were also taught about the deadly force triangle, correct? Yes. <clears throat> and you were taught that deadly force is only to be used as a last resort, correct? That's no. correct. Are these in evidence? 
No, I can tender it if you'd like me to. <laughs> Before you show it to the jury, <laughs> you might want to follow the rules of procedure. Mr. Sheffield. I object, Your Honor, then. I should. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Sheffield. I apologize. If I can see the exhibits that counsel wishes to tender, that would be helpful. This is it. That's it. Do you intend to mark it? Yes, I was showing it to you. I intend to mark it. Thank you. May I approach the witness? Yes. Mr. McMichael, I'm going to show you what has been marked as 414. You recognize that? I do, yes, ma'am. All right. This time the state would tender to evidence. States exhibit 414. No objection. Thank you. No objection. No objection. Submitted. All right. So this was one of the PowerPoint slides you were shown as part of the deadly force triangle and deadly force is only to be used as a last resort, correct? That's correct. You were also trained never to point a firearm at someone unless you intended to use it. Is that correct? Under certain situations, yeah, yes, and then under certain situations, it could be used as a deterrent. do now is talk about what happened on the 23rd of February okay of 2020 mm -hmm. all right so um, let's go ahead and start at the moment your dad kind of came running into the house he was yelling for you correct yes ma'am all right he yelled that the guy from the other night was running down the road yes and you understood that he was talking about the black man uh, that you had seen go into the open unsecured construction site 12 days beforehand on February 11th. He said the guy that had been breaking into the house just ran by. So yes, that was that was uh, what I was thinking at the time. Okay. And your father ran into his bedroom to get his 357 Magnum revolver. Uh, yes, we're in Lewis, yes ma'am. Right. And I want to be real clear. He didn't say he'd seen the man breaking into the house. No. Just that he'd seen the man running down the street. That has been breaking in the house, is what he said, yes, ma'am. And you hadn't seen the black man uh, in the 12 days between February 11th and February 23rd, had you? I did not. And at this time, you were working at Medicine Marine. I was. And your hours were really early in the morning to about 5 at night? It depended on what was going on. It was usually five to one or two in the evening um, but it, it could change so much all right so I just want to be clear five o'clock in the morning to one or two in the afternoon or are you talking 5 p.m. to one or two 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. sometimes okay. all right so on February 23rd 2020 when your dad came in and yelled for you you didn't know where the black man was coming from I had an idea was he said running down the road the guy's been breaking in I've never seen him before I've kind of had an idea that maybe he's coming from 220 but we'll just go out and check out and see what's going on but your dad just said he's running down the road correct yes and you didn't know where he was going when he was running down the road I did not all right and you had no idea what he'd actually been doing that day not at that time no But what you did know at that point in time was that Mr. Arbery had been at the open unsecured construction site on February 11th. Is that right? Yes. And you knew about two other times. Is that correct? I knew that he's been there several times, two other times, and that stuff has been stolen out of there. And then the way that he reacted to me on the 11th was 
was the that was the thought that was was in my mind. Okay. Now you didn't suspect him of having stolen your handgun out of your car 54 days earlier, did you? No, I have no idea who did that. Did you tell Diego Perez that you do who did it? No, I didn't. Did you indicate to Diego Perez you had a good idea who was a good suspect in the neighborhood who had done it? To Diego? No, I did not. Did Diego Perez actually show you the videos from his house um, to see if anyone was going up and down, cars or people? On the first? When my yes. pistol was mm -hmm. So I walked around, I started noticing everybody had these things, so I saw that Diego's house had cameras while I was waiting on the police to come to make the report. Uh, that's the first day I met Diego. And I asked him if if, uh, if there was any, um, if he had any footage from this morning because I had a pistol stolen. And I asked if I can have his thumb drive. And I got his thumb drive and looked through and I didn't see anybody. I saw a couple of trucks that were, um, I've never seen before that had me wonder a little bit, but I didn't see any anybody on there. Okay, so you're, you're saying that Diego Perez actually gave you a thumb drive with these videos on them? Yes. Okay. Isn't it true that you stood there with Diego Perez and looked at the videos with him at the same time? No. I took it home with him. Okay. So while watching, you weren't with Diego Perez watching the videos when, Die when you said to Diego Perez, I think I know who did this. I never said that to Diego Perez. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to February 23rd, 2020, okay? Um, so when you set out um, with your father, <coughs> um, your goal was to go ahead and just talk to Mr. Arbery. Yes, to find out, if, to verify if it was the same individual I saw in the 11th. So basically, ID him. I was going to ID him and then, yes. All right. And at that point in time, when your dad came running and he was all excited, you know, there goes the guy running down the street, you didn't call 911. I did not. All right. Did you tell your dad to call 911? I asked him if he did. I was, uh, I was thinking that, you know, I asked him, have you called 911? Because he comes running in. I thought that he was already on the phone with him or have contacted because he was outside. And uh, he said yes. So I, I assumed that he was, that the police had been called at that point. All right. You made a statement to Detective Nohilly hours after this incident, correct? I did. Okay. You never told him that you thought your dad had already called 911? I told him that I believed 911 was, was called. Um, I don't know exactly what I said, but I believe I did tell him that I was under the impression that my father had called 911. Do you remember on about page nine of your transcript telling Detective No Hilly that Mr. Arbery's running, he won't stop? I said, that's him. Stop right there, stop where you're at. And then you turned to your father and said, call the cops, you know, there he is. Your Honor, if we could show him the transcript. Yeah, if I can have a sure. transcript. Yeah. Asking about page nine of the transcript, I don't think he's been shown the transcript. Well, let me ask you this: Do you recall telling Detective No Hilly that? I'd like to see the transcripts exactly what I said. She asked him whether he recalled it. Said no, so right. she's getting the transcript. Yes. Oh, it's at the very top. That's why I couldn't see it. Take a look at the very top. First couple lines. Yes, I did say that. Um, 
So at this point in time, it's fair to say that you're in the car on Burford with your dad and you're instructing him at this point in time to call the cops because there he is. Like I said earlier on the first, I was all over the place in this statement. Uh, I, I said that to, to Officer Nohealy, but at, at the time, I was still, I was still under the influence of what happened. This was only two hours after the most traumatic experience of my life. Uh, I'm trying to give them as much information as I can. So from reading these transcripts, I realized that I was scatterbrained everywhere. When I said the whole paragraph, so pull, so pull up to him and say, hey, you know what's going on. He's running. He won't stop. I said, that's him. Stop right there. Stop right there. Call the cops. You know, there he is. Starts acting funny. Takes off running. I'm all over the place. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to explain what's going on, but yes, I said it, but I don't think I, I, I don't think I was intending to say there he is. Hey, you call the cops. It was it was the same time of the situation kind of muddled together. So let's go back to the house. Yes, ma'am. Your father runs in, grabs his 357 Magnum, and you automatically grab your shotgun. I, that is the closest weapon I had. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, with that particular shotgun that we have in evidence, you saw that, correct? Yes, yes. And you were here when Brian Leopard testified. Correct? I was, yes, ma'am. And it was loaded with seven shotgun shells, correct? It, yes, I believe so. All right. So all you had to do was take the safety off and pull the trigger in order to kill someone, correct? To shoot it was all I had to do was to, I kept the all my shotguns, the action bar lock engage, disengaged, the action down halfway and off on safety, for more protective safety. Uh, so yeah, it was loaded if that's what you're asking. No, I was, I was asking, all you had to do to shoot and kill someone was take the safety off and pull the trigger. No, take the safety off and then pull it, push the action bar lock up. And you did both those things in order to kill Mr. Arbery? Uh, when he was on top of me, I disengaged the safety, pulled the trigger, yes ma'am. So now, when your dad comes running in, he's all excited, you didn't stop him and tell him to calm down, did you? No. No. So this is oh, go ahead. no, but I was trying to find out what was going on. I was trying to find out the situation. If I walked outside and I didn't see our neighbor that was aware of February 11th and knew that 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 the guy that we're suspecting has been in this house several times, ran by, was pointing down the road, then yes, I said, Dad, calm down. This calm down. But the totality of the circumstance and everything that happened the 11th hearing knowing that there was stuff stolen out of that house, that he has been continually breaking into this house. And then he just ran into the neighborhood with the neighborhood, with the neighbor pointing down the road. That led me to believe there's probable cause that something has happened down there. Something has happened with this guy again. Let me make sure, let's see what happened. Let me make sure everybody's okay. It's identified. All right, so you just said, based on everything you think something had happened yes, but you had no idea what had happened at, at that time no ma'am all right and at this point in time you tell the jury that your father had suffered a couple heart attacks a stroke and a hip replacement yes ma'am okay. and you grabbed your shotgun and walked outside with it and that's when you saw Mr. Albenzi? Yes, ma'am. So you'd already made the decision inside the house to go with your father to go track down Mr. Arbery? Made a decision to find out why he was so excited, what was going on at the time. I walked outside to analyze the situation to see why my father, who's had two heart attacks, a stroke, and a complete hip replacement, why he's so 
excited? What 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 caused him to be uh, in this state of mind? Well, what happened? Well, why is what what has happened? It's not something that happens every day. So yeah, I was alarmed. I'm gonna go out there and see what happened, investigate what's going on. You took your shotgun with you out there. I did. And you didn't tell your dad to go back in the house. Yeah, I didn't see him at that point. He he ran off into the Becker's. Uh, so when you got out there and you saw Mr. Albenze, you didn't say, Dad, go back in the house. We're not going to do this. We're going to call 911. I have told him, when he jumped in the truck, I, when I asked him to call 911, I wanted to make sure that everything was okay to see what was happening, to verify, to see if it's the same guy. If it was going in the road and if it was not the same one, then yes, I would all right, this is not the same guy. This is a misidentification. This isn't the guy that police have been looking for been breaking in this house the stuff has been stolen in it was continuing on but as we went down and identified him that yes this is him let's let's try to hold him for the police talk to him didn't you tell this jury that you assumed your father was correct and that's why you got your shotgun yes all right and defendants exhibit 14 <coughs> Your son was inside the house, correct? He was. And this car seat was in the car? Yes. So when you get in the car and Greg McMichael goes to get in the car, this doesn't stop the two of you. They, the car seat being there and going, well, you know, Dad, we really can't do this. The car seat's there. Let's just call the police. It did not. Um, he kept saying, you go down there, go down there. Like I said, seeing the neighbor down there, seeing how he acted on the 11th, uh, like he was brandished a weapon. I don't know what's happened. I'm, I'm, I don't know if somebody got hurt. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm just going to go down and investigate. It was. It was. Uh, so you're going to go down and investigate, even though you testified. You're not going to chase or investigate someone who is armed, correct? I don't know if he was armed or not. I don't know if he was armed or not. Just go ahead and look. I'm not going to. Just look at the totality of the circumstance. It's not. Uh, stop him you know, to the point and say you know are you armed or if he had a gun or anything I would have backed off I just wanted to go and see what's going on that's that's that was all it was at that point you didn't tell your dad this is a really really bad idea that could go really wrong for us and we should just stay here and call 911 you didn't say that did you I didn't now when you got inside the truck you had your phone with you. Yeah, yes, I had my phone. And you didn't call 911 at that point. I did not. And you didn't give it to your dad to call 911 at that point. No, because I thought that he had called 911 and he had his phone at the time. Would this be a good stopping point, Judge? Yeah, well, we can stop here. Um, I'm just looking for a natural break. In the okay, if it's a natural place. break in the testimony, if you can move to another area then. Yes. All, right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, why don't we go ahead and break for the day then? Um, again, during the recess, hold on a sec. Hold, no, don't get away yet. <laughs> All right, again, during the recess, please do not discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anybody else. Don't go looking for any information about the case. Don't go picking up any newspapers or social media. If anybody is uh, around you or approaches you about the case, please notify the court. Don't let anybody discuss the case in your presence of hearing. And if any of that happens, please let us know first thing in the morning so that we can go ahead and get that addressed. So with those instructions and all the other instructions I've given you, have a good evening. We'll see you back here at 9 o'clock for the continuation of evidence. Thank you. So all right for the jury.
Please be seated. Oh, sir, you can go ahead and step down. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything from the state then before we recess? No, Your Honor. From Travis McMichael. No, Your Honor. From Greg McMichael. No, Your Honor. From Mr. Brown. No, Your Honor. Uh, we'll be in recess then until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.